everyone and good morning everybody. I'm Belinda Ward. Welcome to this um, Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board meeting today. Uh, we just can start off by introducing ourselves to you and um, we have collective members and some staff in the room just so you know who you're sitting amongst. Starting with. Oh, morena, uh, kia ora koutou katoa. Um, ko Dave Beer, hukwe tuku ingoa. So I'm Dave, also known as Beer. Um, and I'm the member for the Kiri Kiri Waipapa subdivision. Kia ora. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lane Air. I'm with the Kiri Kiri subdivision. This morning, I'm Bruce Mills, and I'm from the Whangaroa subdivision. Uh, but in the ward, my subdivision area is Pai Beer. I'm the main view, and I'm the democracy advisor during today's meeting. Hello, my name is Asa Hedewai. I'm the team leader of our democracy services at the council, so thank you for supporting us today. Hello, I'm Dana Lee Fulham. I'm the Lincoln Administrator, and good to support. Good morning, kia ora. My name is Manuela Kiyo-Wanao, and I'm representing Russell and Opua Subdivision. Good morning, Frank Owen, Deputy Chair of the Board representing Kerry Kerry Subdivision. Good morning, Nas. Um, kia ora, my name is Manu Wai. I represent the Oinawa Kawakala area. Welcome to this part of me, Tane. I'm going to try and convey everything I'm feeling. <laughs> so, if you see my eyebrows working over time, that's why. I'm ahead. Kia ora, everyone. My name is Kelsey and I'm the funding advisor. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you, everybody, and welcome to those uh, who are watching us online, the members of the public, and to our wonderful large um, public forum here today. I'm going to start off by reading uh, Karakia. We ask that through the board's discussions and decisions, the representatives elected may advocate on behalf of the Bay of Islands Whangarau community with Araha, imagination, skill, and wisdom to achieve a fairer and more united community that enhances the well being of the community. And solves the community's problems efficiently. Uh, we have apologies today from um, Councillor Smith, who sits on our board, and we also include Councillor Clendon, uh, who sits with speaking but non voting rights on our board. Uh, I'll read those apologies. Do I have a second? Yep. We'll move straight into our uh, public forum session. I did have apologies for uh, Hilary Sumter was coming to speak on item 8.5, the redwood trees. Uh, we'll address that later on when we deal with the report. Uh, so first up, I have Hedy uh, um, uh, Hotelini, is it? Uh, I'll speak for a moment. Uh, hi, um, Madam Chair. I was just messaging Hedy, she's having trouble joining in on the link. I did there, no, no. to resubmit our application and I'd just like to go through our reasons why. Um, the overarching purpose of the Matariki Bay of Islands has been to create a multi-discipline festival that celebrates Huanga, Matariki in the far north. To bring this festival together there has been significant consultation and collaboration with Iwi and cultural advisor, but hence we've got Nancy Carl with us here today and we had hoped to have a Zoom link, as well as community groups and businesses. There are multiple iwi and community-led events over a six-week period um, that the festival is supporting. Our application that we put in was very detailed, and we believe clearly stated our intentions 
of how we wanted the festival to come together. Um, and there were points that were raised as part of the decision making process. The funding that we are requesting is to be able to hold the anchor event, which is on the 24th and the 25th of June, which is the new public bank holiday, which we believe benefits all. And we believe will support sharing the Matariki story and bringing our cultures together, an avenue to engage local youth in community and arts, bring our community together, significant social and economic benefits, as well as supporting a major event that's going to take place in Northland in winter. The Matariki Festival as a whole pulls together many strands, and we have secured other funding, which has been from the Northland Regional Events Fund and also Tiaroiti, but that has already been allocated and secured to other parts of the festival. Business Pride here has been asked to support these main events and approach community board for finding to support it. Unfortunately, the 5,000 that was granted last time wasn't sufficient enough for us to deliver the event that we have proposed. Hence, we have resubmitted to ask for further funding. There is part of this event that was discussed about pilots. Um, so we have had discussions with Nantikawa, with the Iwi, and we're in discussions as whether we continue with the fireworks or whether we have an alternative of a light show. So we are aware of what's happening in the media, so we just want to put that forward. That has been part of our discussions in the last four to six weeks. So we do hope you will reconsider our application. If there's anything that anybody would like to add, and we'll Will anybody be speaking to us in relation to the application, or are you just going to use the public forum time to do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if any, if anybody has any questions, you do have a couple of minutes left. Stage door, and we we on stage yet? Fast. Mm -hmm. Oh, for a funding application? Yeah. No, you're a bit further on in the agenda. That's so, okay. thank you. <coughs> right, no further public speakers. Um, we have no deputations today, so we'll move straight into our um, funding application speakers. Now we have business pay from Ardriki down um, to speak to that funding application. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that? It's no, the opportunity to open for questions. Open for questions? Yeah. Sure. Right. Manu uh, Kilda. Kilda. Hello. Thank you for coming today. You know, when you said um, brought this application, it was online, so it's lovely to see you in person. Also, when you came, I couldn't see any fun they were doing, so it's really <laughs> lovely to see you. Um, I had a question about the um, some of the figures, one of the figures on the, I'm really glad that you responded to the fireworks call, 
Uh, but you know, um, under the um, Fox quote for the free buses, how was that number arrived at? Because when I looked at the quote, it said added up a little bit. Is it because it doesn't include GST or the 8907? I added up and the way they said <laughs> and it was four buses from each of those areas. That was all, all of the questions that I had. Thanks um, for coming to, to represent. I think it sounds really exciting. So I have to say that, that you know any events that are um, promoting our new public holiday and it's a very important part of um, our cultural um, history as well. Um, are really good. Um, I just wanted to follow on. So I, I actually looked at the buses. Are you providing buses on both of those days? So the quote for one or, or four? So one on one day and three on the other, or? No, no, no. All one, all on. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, I notice on the, in the quotes that you've got a number of Auckland companies that are supplying um, the uh, sound gear and, and the, uh, you know, the hire. Um, so part of what we have supported in the past as a board was um, supporting our local, local businesses. So is there a reason why that you felt there was a need to have to go to Auckland companies and uh, and utilise their services for that? And yet for the, the special equipment, we can't get any of that in from that there is a local sound company which doesn't have the exact equipment required, but I don't think it's can at the moment. So the, and we do and have supplies in front of them. So, we had local suppliers, we would use them. We, we push that hugely in all our events. We go to local suppliers. So, but there's nobody that has the size of marquees. There's nobody that has. It's actually cheaper to bring the same size. Okay? So, yes, but, but we do absolutely. That's the purpose of every single one of my events. Is <laughs> Doing the mono eyebrow, thank you. I think we will be making a decision a little bit later in the meeting once we've heard the other speakers. Thank you very much. I'm just going to alter this order paper a little bit because somebody has a flight to catch. So if we go to um, the speaker for Bay of Islands Animal Rescue application, which is on page 65 of our agenda. Additional information on page 176. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. Some of you don't need introducing. <laughs> Welcome. Sure, no. my name's Summer Johnson, and this is Ed. Um, is it all right to stand here because I feel awkward having my back to. <laughs> Thank you for having us along again. Um, it's been a pretty full on year so far. I just wanted to give you some numbers and some things that we've been, we've been trying to achieve. So since the 1st of January till today, we've had 402 puppies and dogs and 148 cats and kittens. Um, so our funding application today is to support community desexting. In October last year, we ran a community desexting and vaccination day in Moriwa. It was very successful. We had 86 dogs vaccinated and followed up with 63 desexings um, over months. Um, Parvo is a huge problem in the north, and the only way we're going to um, get Parvo is by vaccinating, vaccinating, vaccinating. Um, to stop it getting into our pounds, cleaning up our areas, our beaches, because I find it quite offensive to be able to have to advertise the beautiful Northland 
but when you come on holiday, make sure you've got all the vaccinated travel and everything. Tank what we have to offer in the north end. Um, so, dog fighting has been brought to our attention. So, we're trying to get into schools with education programs on how to treat our animals, as well as community hooies and um, I. Um, I met with Twin Post Cycles uh, on Monday um, to identify problems that they're having in particular areas of Northland um, and just trying to get into the communities to educate people about making it safer by places. Um, Identifying strain dogs, finding where they come from, trying to push for the best vaccine and operation of the Everything I was going to say, you just said. <laughs> oh, I cannot talk. Yeah. Um, is there any questions? Thank you for what you're doing. Um, Thank you. It's me off to you, Bobby Knight. You're making one cry. No, it wasn't you, it was the people that. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for this? You're doing a good job, eh? Carry on doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't stop. No, we can't stop. No. <laughs> The biggest problem we've got is, is the like our monthly vessel that goes to Northern Britain. Um, our fuel bill is um, you know, because of the job that someone's done, it's just growing, starting to get out of control. Um, and the best vaccine is not too far. Probably at the forefront of what we need to do. You see some people numbers down. Last financial year, um, we spent $86,000 on community testing, and that was with the help of funding that you gave us as well. So I think together we're achieving good things. Just Sorry, Summer, how much was that on? 86000 on, on top of the grant. Yeah. Wow. So that was inclusive mm -hmm. of the oh. grants that you cut us off. Oh, I'll just make the observation, like um, Manuela made too, you know, that, that you know, Master Council took credit for chip and snip, and you know what a glorious thing you're actually out there doing the mucky all the time. And so, yeah, I, I think that given that um, that most families, about one and one and two families, have a dog, um, or what have you, then yeah, it's certainly part of our Fano as well. And um, obviously, if if you're if you're uh, deceasing dogs, they're less likely to stray. Cause fights and to cause other other issues. So um, and certainly not likely to have unwanted animals. So I, I think that's a really good a good opportunity. So I just wanted to I'll talk about your work as well. Thank you. We're also um, housing New Zealand and collaborating with them because in Auckland they have a loose agreement with how, with tenants of housing New Zealand that the dogs have to be desex vaccinated, registered, microchip in order to keep roof over your head. Um, and as much as they try up here, because it's not in the writing of the Tenancy Act for Housing New Zealand, we're now looking at trying to rewrite that and have the same power as Auckland does, so that if you're in a Housing New Zealand house, your dog has to be have a warrant and a rego. Um, so I think that will be <coughs> And, um, I'm sorry to have to turn my back and duck away, but I need to go and do my job, and this gentleman needs to get the press So thanks very much for your time, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, next we have a speaker for um, Aroha Island Music, page 51 of your agenda. Additional information on page 69. Hello, that's me. Um, it's actually Arrowhead Music Society. 
but we do focus on the Bay of Islands, of course. And we are in partnership providing uh, classical music at the chamber level, which is one to six people maximum, at the Turner Centre in the auditorium, which is wonderful. And they, they are the only people bringing this kind of music to the area. And it ranges from Haydn to Gareth Barr, the New Zealand composer. So um, we feel it's something that we want to keep alive. We have a program where free admission to anyone under 18 in the concert. And we have one particularly wonderful violin student, a little girl who brings her violin and we take her backstage and the musician signs her violin. She's getting quite a collection now. So there is some interest in the youth. There's not a lot of kids studying classical piano or violin, but there are some. And we have also probably more of a focus on the elderly um, who come from that culture. We have a lot of Western Europeans who have retired here or live here. This is music that they grew up with, the Beethoven and French to the Boozy. So it's for them, a lot of them can't travel to Auckland to hear this kind of music live. So we've had generally about five concerts a year in partnership with Chamber Music New Zealand. So we're their regional partner and they select a group of musicians. We choose who we want to have come up and uh, we do a couple <coughs> of independent um, hostings, which often are people who have already come up with Chamber Music New Zealand but aren't on the current year. So it's a variety of things. The last concert was a quartet plus the clarinet player from the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra. And uh, we had 80 people attend that, a lot of interest. However, the musicians' fees have gone up, the uh, venue fees have gone up, and our audience, we've kept uh, the ticket price at $40. And it just doesn't cover those fees and venue hire. So that's why we're interested in We've had good support in the past from Foundation North. However, that's, their direction's changed. Currently, we have support from Kerry Perry National Piano Competition Trust. However, they're winding up this year. So that obviously we looking. So this is the first time we've asked for your support. And uh, I've been the president for four years, five years. Oh, six years, since 2017, <laughs> and uh, the society's been going since 2009. So I think it adds to the cultural mix that we have here in the Bay of Islands, which is a very, very interesting place to live. I'm from Taranaki originally, um, but spent a lot of my professional life in the States, and in London, of course, the early that never ends, um, but it did end here. And so we'd really just like some support to make sure we can keep bringing these musicians who are all professionals and they, they don't get paid a lot. <laughs> and it's been such a uh, So we just like some support. So we've, we've got a fairly healthy budget, but again, um, costs keep going up and uh, revenue from ticket sales is fairly consistent and we don't feel like we can bump our ticket sales anymore. $40 for a concert, which, um, so any questions? That's... Thank you. Hey. Oh, I'll lead off, although they're going to relate to some of the other presentations that we're going to have. So a, a common issue that we get for our present, thank you for coming to us, and, and, and um, I can I'm a, I'm a brass player and I was a conductor and what have you, so uh, in my earlier life, so I do a, have a, a strong appreciation for music and the arts. Um, part of what we've, we, we, we discuss here as, as I guess is, is where our money goes to it, how much benefit it gains the community. And, and the common thing, a lot of the funding applications today is the cost of hireage of the Turner Centre. So by default, we're almost asked to continue to subsidise the Turner Centre's operation. And, and so that's a, it's an ongoing struggle for us. And if you stay for the discussion, you'll probably hear that um, teased out um, then again. Part of what some of us are involved with is around the domain and uh, 
what has been proposed as an iconic building. One of the, and Jane Johnson is leading part of the, the public consultation on that. One of the options that's been suggested as some sort of, uh, what would we like, amphitheatre or something like that, a performance, a covered performance stage. I wondered whether you'd, you'd considered in terms of bringing arts to the outside for concerts where more people could attend or perhaps on a, on a free basis, given that your costs are largely based either on professional fees or on venue hireage. A uh, couple of issues there. Uh, I've been to a lot of outdoor classical concerts, and uh, the acoustics are difficult for uh, a group of a violin, a viola, and a bass. It's not exactly a, a booming type of music. The other issue is that the musicians hate playing in humidity. Their instruments go berserk. So it's really hard to ask some guy with a $60,000 cello to sit out in a wet, rainy day, um, even if he's under cover. So probably the combination of the instruments being at risk, um, we can't afford to compensate for coping with that. And the fact that it's the acoustics, it's not a, they don't play with microphones. You know, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of, impact like that. It's usually much more what they call it chamber music, so this would be in a fairly small space. Um, and this is considered a small space. I mean, it's quite a large space, but it's 300 people. I would just like to say that the Turner Centre has been, well, one of the reasons I moved back to the Bay of Islands um, after living overseas for a long time, because I felt it was a cultural centre, a bit like Kiri Jakarta, I wouldn't come back till they built the OGS centre. I'm not quite in her lead, but it was a deciding factor for me to have access to a professionally run community centre. And I guess one of my concerns is it seems like it's not really a community centre anymore. Um, and I'm a little disappointed personally. I felt there was support in the community to keep this going and running and uh, it's a fabulous space. All of our professional musicians are impressed by the space. Um, the first place I ever went to a concert up here was the Woolshed, where Michael Houston was playing down the road. Uh, and, you know, it was it's just such a leap forward for the Bay of Islands to have a centre like this. And I'm very passionate about keeping this centre, you know, I support everything I can. <coughs> I, I, I really feel a little saddened that it's not being supported. I thought it was going to be supported by the council and um, the region far more than it seems to be. So, um, so I guess I'm coming in the back door to ask you to support it as you say. Um, and I, I just hope it's a uh, priority. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm a little, I didn't know anything about that. <coughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. We're here supporting it today by using it, so. Yeah, no, I've got any other questions. <laughs> I oh, just want you, you mentioned about 80 people. I'm just wondering what you might be reasonably expecting um, for uh, an attendance for the concerts or what you budget it on. Uh, we usually budget for a bit less than that. Um, 80 is 80. I think the most we ever had was 100. It's not, again, it's not a huge 60 on average. So, but pandemic, you know, it was unpredictable. Uh, we had the, it's, it's just unpredictable. Uh, we have changed the time of the concerts to 4 p.m. on Sundays because of people in the winter not wanting to come out at night. So we're hoping, you know, we're trying to do everything we can to get people, like we had a, you know, people would go out to wet windy night, you know, and go out. So we've gone to a four o'clock on Sunday afternoon format for most, well, for the rest of the year. We're hoping, we're trying to do everything we can to get people to come and uh, pay the ticket fee. Thanks, Colin. I have another question. Oh, sorry. Hey, Colin. Um, I, I was just thinking the other day, because I grew up with classical music and playing it. Well, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But I was never aware that there was consequence that until I received the funding application. You don't get the so yeah. that's something to food for thought that um, maybe you don't that, get the to the extent of marketing email. So I never subscribed to it. So you know, for me, it's the first time. What a shame! The first time that I'm actually in the centre today. Um, where, where do you live in Russell? Well, we have a few people in Russell. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying it, it's great. I'm really happy to see classical music is still around and want to listen to it because for me it is a big cultural thing and it'd be great for more young ones. Yeah, I, I was never aware of it, so it's just some pretty there are ads in the paper. I don't. I don't. Who know. read the paper nowadays? Well, <laughs> well, it's just I'm yeah. not having a go. No, no, no I'm, I'm just saying, saying I don't know how to reach you otherwise. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's yeah. I, it's, I don't know either. It's a tricky thing, isn't it? It's, you can't tell well, the secret, so I wasn't aware of it before. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, that's always, you know, a battle. Tricky, um, yeah. But uh, if people aren't really... So you never come to anything at the turn of It's a long way to come for a start, but it hasn't ever, it's never been to the turn That's why we went to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Yeah. Right, it's a good idea. No, it's was right. actually based on some of the Russell Yep. There you go. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Next slide. And yes, I found it informative likewise, and I've lived here for quite a long time. So, um, perhaps social media posts and things. Some, um, we have a Facebook page. We're on Event Finder. I mean, if you have an Instagram so account, I mean, I don't know what else we can do. Because unless you go looking for classical music, you probably it's the Facebook is it it's under our anyway, event finder, it's always there. Creative Northland always lists it. Okay. So right. but any other marketing ideas? You know, we used to put posters up behind the toilet doors and play here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you know, we've we we've, we've gone to some fairly basic limits. <laughs> Lovely. You're welcome to stay with us. Um, it, we'll be making a decision a bit later. We've got a few more speakers to hear this morning, but uh, mm -hmm. free to stay. Okay. Right. I've got uh, and Singers up next on page 58, with additional information on page 128. Is it right? I don't have my mask. I'm struggling to breathe. I've got asthma. Certainly. Yes. Uh, I'd like to sorry. step aside and introduce yourself oh, there. Uh, so I'm Janet Huddleston, I'm the Vice President of Bayline and Singers, and uh, this is the first time we've ever approached you guys for funding. Uh, we are a choir of about 70 people, and um, they're very much a community choir. Most of our members are from Kerry Perry or Paihia, like myself, or some from Russell, and Opa, and my Matty Hills, so that's our main uh, group. And we rehearse here, here so we support the fraternity for we have our rehearsals here every Monday night. The uh, choir's been going since the 80s, so it's a uh, long standing choir. And we do choral works and we put on three key concerts a year. Usually, two of them in the actual Turner Centre Auditorium itself. Sometimes, a third might be in the Music Hall Plaza, the only venue if it's appropriate, depending on what music we're doing. Um, we usually have an orchestra as well, and, and um, talking about the um, Local input, we use as many of our local uh, singers and instrumentalists as possible. Um, the concert we're doing in July, for which we're, we've asked for some funding towards the venue, because as, as my colleague Clara has pointed out, the venue costs have gone up significantly. And um, that concert will have two soloists, both of whom are from Terry Kerry, and three instrumentalists, um, who are I think one's local and two are from other range. So I say we always use local people as much as possible. And um, looking at audience, we draw uh, anything from, usually from 200 plus. If we do something like the Messiah, like we're doing in the media, we know we get four pounds. So there is still a good amount of support and interest in this community for um, the big choral works like Candle and Messiah. And so, yeah, that, that's where we're coming from. Any questions? Lovely. Thank you, Janet. Um, questions? Yeah, okay. Yes, no. Have you thought of teaming up? 
I mean, I don't want to see things. Tip, tip, well, because I find having a range of small events carries much higher overheads than joining up and having a, a, a weekend of music or you know, say choral music and and uh, and other classic music or something. So, I've, I've, you know, we're looking at our overhead that are coming and you know, we want to support, um, you know, the arts and the performances and, and what have you. Um, and then we look at the overheads and, and, and again, it often comes back to you know, rent as, as being, you know, something and, and performance space or rehearsal space. So I just wonder whether that was something that you might consider as a festival or something uh, uh, um, that might bring it together. So we'll... I think there are just two very different distinct genres of music, really, although they're both classical music based. One is um, a small chamber orchestra of five or six people. We're looking for big choral performance that requires our orchestra usually about 22. That's a full orchestra with violin, with wind, and, and timpani, and strings. But just a very different. And um, yeah, we, we certainly need the big auditorium because we barely fit our choir onto the stage here. And then it's same with our orchestra, so it's quite quite a it, it needs a big venue. It's like a Kirita Kanawa situation. We do need a decent side venue, and this is such a popular venue. Um, we do appreciate that, um, that the costs have been literally doubled. We obviously like to also, I've always um, kind of spread the love around. I don't go to one program more than once um, over a year or two because um, I don't like to do that. I don't like to burden anyone. I mean, this is the first time we've approached you. Hey, uh, just one last question. Uh, to so, um, the, I, I'm sorry, we're sitting here. But I'm unaware of the total capacity of the main auditorium. So you, brought, so you may be looking at at least half half filling it. Uh, yeah, for a, for an average concert, yes, yep. we look at about okay. forty to two hundred. So we usually budget for around one sixty. But when we're under that, when we use a messiah, we know we'll fill it. Great. Okay. Sorry, I had some other ideas. I'll come up on that later discuss them. So <coughs> some way that we can maybe support. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes. Oh, sorry. 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 No worries. Uh, and, and it may well be in there, and forgive me for not reading everything. No, okay. uh, do you have any special pricing for children or you? Yes. You yes, we do. $10. Okay, yes. Thank you. And we do get um, young people at our concerts too, and children. Both, both applications, Madam Chairman. We need to support the arts. They won't get, won't get major crowd, but it's something. I agree harder and harder. I do know it's, um, sorry, did you finish, Brian? I, I, I worked at the AHS for a brief period of time, and I mean, there's no doubt that there were certain things that were subsidised. So. Yeah, it, it is the nature of the beast, um, and, and we also have that balance of, you know, how much should we charge for people who want to make it accessible? So there's always that um, balance. I did know that you're the only, the only coral group outside yes. North Pomeroy, which is a been really great area, isn't it? Oh, I think so. Yeah, they're yeah. actually a premier group and a real, a real boon to have a group. So, yes, yes, we are. Thank you, Janet. And as I said previously, feel free to stay if you have to wait and hear the discussion. We'll make a decision a bit later. Thank you. Bay of Islands Animal Rescue with Head and Bay of Islands Community Centre, they are not coming to speak today, they have withdrawn the application. So next up we have uh, Far North Land Search and Rescue. Hayden Smith, welcome. <coughs> Good morning everybody, this um, is our President Don McCarthy, you know the vice. Um, Age 69 of your agenda. We're here today to ask for funding to assist us with um, rent. Currently we are um, at the Mid North Rescue Centre just next to the airport. Coast Guard rent the building and they sublease to us at a nominal fee. Coast Guard are relocating 
and um, without knowing too much about their business, it is taking them longer to find um, a property or sign up to a property here in by here or speak they are now looking at paper. That's unofficial information that I've received, but they can't give us a kicking out date <laughs> because when they stop their lease, they only have to give a month's notice and they haven't done that yet. But when they give a month's notice, they'll give us that month's notice. So we are trying to get ahead of the game and ask the Burns Force to, to support us now. Um, <coughs> Final Holdings own the building and the, uh, um, in our initial discussion with them was it was 14,250 plus GST plus banks plus insurance. But they will talk to us about negotiating, but not until the Coast Guard has given their notice. So we're kind of stuck. Um, of course we're going to try and negotiate it down for, because we want to stay there and um, we'll, this gives us a bit of time to think about where we can go, what else we can go when we've got a year to lead into it rather than maybe a month. So that's why we're here initially. Um, since I wrote the report, I think we've, we've had six call outs. So um, we had one in April and a young lad didn't go home from the Kiri Kiri domain, he's eight years old. So it was a night search. And um, John was lucky, uh, lucky enough to find a CCTV camera and we located the lad. So good outcome. That was about 11 o'clock or something, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was amazing that. Yeah. Um, and then we've in May, we had four call outs a two day one at Waimea Forest, a two day one at uh, Waipua at Wanamaku, um, we had one to Hiki, a uh, trapper, uh, hadn't come home, and um, we assisted by getting our gear to the police. The police borrowed our gear um, for a recent one at Cherry Park. We didn't actually, they didn't want us here. But they used our gear. Of course, we had a relationship with our uh, police search and rescue team, so, you know. Um, I will, we also do Wanda search, and I don't know if anyone knows what Wanda search is. It's people with cognitive deficits or problems, <laughs> uh, and they might wander off, and we provide a little pendant, which has got a radio frequency in it. And if they wander off, they ring the police, the police ring us, and we race out with our aerials, tune into their frequency, and we can track, and we can hear their frequency up to eight kilometres. Once we get a bead on it, then we move into our Kiwi, I call it the Kiwi tracker, because it's got one of those little areas that you <laughs> track Kiwis as well. Um, and yeah, time is of the essence with those people. They we um, older ones to often just walk into the late time and then lie down in the long grass. We just have a rest. And so really, really good thing we do. And we have lots of children and lots of children with um, yeah, problems that the Lord seems to have. Um, a lot of our searches, um, unfortunately, are for this to people now. So time is of the essence. Currently we have gear because we've simply moved out thinking, gosh, if we've only got three weeks, why do we do with all our stuff? So currently we've got gear at my place, um, at two other members' places, and one of our ladies has got all our clothing. So if we get a call out and we need ropes, if Chris comes, that's good, but if he doesn't come, then someone's got to go to Chris's place and pick him up. So we really need a place for home. Yeah, that's us. Um, questions from that conversation, what you need is a storage place as opposed to office space or meeting space? Or we have a lot of training there, okay. um, like first aid, we had first aid last week. We, we're, um, we have to train, we have competencies, so if I did my first aid last week, we just did a portion of it, but it's lifting my competencies, and my competencies have to be 
upgraded every three months. We train at least twice a month. And on that, we've got about 20 people in our team. So sorry, we, sorry, we've got about 26 people in our team. So when we do do training, if we get the full 26, we need a base where that supports that. A lot of our training is outdoors, but it's also indoors with in services, um, physical training, mental health trainings, first aid, river, river trainings, just everything we do, navigation, GPS stuff. Carrying a stretcher, if we carry a stretcher around the perimeter of the airport sometimes just because there's a technique and you don't just pick it up and carry it. Sometimes we can carry it 10 kilometres, so yeah, there's a, a way to do all of that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <coughs> presentation and uh, and the work that you do. Um, I wonder whether it, 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 part of what we often discuss is that we don't fund rent and things like that or we haven't typically funded rent but you've got a number of other parts of your funding application to show that other parts of your work that we submitting an application to us that I feel very supportive of funding. I wonder whether if depending on the outcome of today's discussion that if you weren't successful, whether you would come back with another application for the other bits of funding that you are uh, offering, you know, the, 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 the things that you're doing? Mm. We, then, yeah, we um, have been given the next three years, well, we're already up June, it's our first year, uh, 15,000 from Northern Regional Council, but it's targeted. Mm. It's for equipment only, so we can't use that for rent. So we haven't, and we don't really get any other funding. So unless we do a major, we did a major fundraising two years ago, and we put ourselves into a pretty good position. But we buy all our own equipment. We we don't get funding. We <coughs> buy our boots, our gaiters, our bush clothes, our whistles, our compasses. We supply that as a volunteer because we're out. We're on call twenty four seven, and we're out all weather conditions. So just putting it out there, we always need volunteers, but at two o'clock in the morning in the Mangan Hills when it's mud up to your knees, you need good weather. Like weather are protected, you know, normal competing. So our jackets are only 800 dollars. <coughs> then we've got the GPS in there, probably another, you know, 800. We've got the waterproof pants, our boots, so good hiking boots, vests, our protective equipment alone, I would be probably would be geared up with a couple of thousand dollars worth of our best that we wear carry radios, so we got comms, GPSs, your, your radios, personal first aid, um, team member for kit, first aid for our lost party, clothing for lost party. It's easily, yeah, a couple of thousand for Something I feel very open to, to supporting if you wanted to have that particular equipment or wear uh, things to be doing your work. So I don't, I don't, I'm not speaking on behalf of the rest of the board, but I, again, with some of today's things, whether they've been framed the right way to fit with the sort of the, the lane that we've chosen. Um, mm -hmm. So just my personal one is, is that, um, you know, if, if, if the next question will be, what, what have you asked the Regional Council for funding around rent? No, because we've only just got the, yeah, okay. the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so, Ray, when you have applied to the three Yes, because you always see we were in Kaika. Do the Barmore district, far and wide. Um, Catherine probably tell us the outcome of that, but were you successful with the yes, uh, Kaika news yes, today? Yes, we were. Okay, great. And, and if we negotiate the rent down, we, will, we won't need that amount. And, and he said he has indicated he will, but we don't take it. <coughs> and I understand that. Yeah, it's a bit of a tricky situation to be in when you know your teacher is on short notice. Yeah. And, um, Else to come. Questions? I just had a question. Why do you get 
could ask after the, the oh, forum. forum. Thank you. Okay, Raymond, you're welcome to stay. Yeah, um, I'm going to get to work. And yes. Yeah, we'll just finish with our mission statement is respect, resilience, and response. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation, and you're more than welcome to us. Right. Uh, next, we have the Kiriki Business Association. Do we have a representative? So we are uh, coming to you as a new and reinvigorated business association today. We are pretty excited about some of the things that we'll be doing for Kitty Kitty. Um, and today we're kind of lucky to a little bit to be working with our Kitty Kitty around this proposal that Nola, I'm sure you a lot of you will know Nola, um, has been working to bring hanging baskets to the centre of town. So if I can take you back a few years uh, to the early 2000s, when some of you may remember that there was an irrigation system that was funded through town um, and baskets were installed, probably not with a lot of forethought to be fair. Um, the baskets were filled up nice pretty pink flowers, which of course I don't object to, but they didn't last very long. They weren't very well maintained. There was issues with some of the watering. Um, so all things that have been very much taken into account in this proposition that we've put forward. Um, we are looking for the support for the funding of the replacement of the irrigation system. It's very damaged. Um, it's been nearly 20 years since those early 2000 days. Um, if I can just get Tegan to talk a little bit to the reasons why we're looking to do it, that would be wonderful. So these include attracting more visitors and customers to Kerry Kerry, which post-pandemic is really, really important. We're going to increase the trade of our local businesses, and in doing this, provide a very pleasant shopping experience within the town, and relaxation, so you can stop on the street, have a talk with your friends. A thriving town, which encourages our long-term residents and investors. These baskets will bring a sense of serenity and beauty to our environment. It will provide reasons for people to slow, to slow down and linger longer within the town. To improve the overall air quality by filtering out pollutants, which is incredibly important at the moment, and have a positive impact on community health, reduction of smoke, dust, and CO2. Hopefully, it will release some stress. Improving mental health and aiding in the cognitive development in our children. It's a well known fact that crime rates drop considerably in a plant lined street. And hopefully, it reduces the noise, the noise pollution levels caused by the increased traffic in the main street. Just have to be there at 5 o'clock in the lunchtime to see that. To counter the warming effects of paid, paid services, and these baskets will provide positive energy and are of intrinsic. Value. So um, we've done a lot of the work to make sure that these baskets won't fall into the same category that they did last time. The plants that will be planted within the baskets are subtropicals, so they won't need the maintenance that the previous baskets did. Um, there has also been a very recent conversation up to last night uh, where the council has agreed to uh, hang the baskets, to maintain the baskets, and to fertilise those uh, twice a year. So that's a formal agreement that's just being established at the moment. But like I said, the conversation was only held last night, so we haven't got anything included in the submission around that. Um, the baskets themselves, we uh, Nola has been a really good business in town um, and spoken to the individual businesses, and they're all very um, encouraging um, of bringing the baskets back to town and the individual baskets, which will be about yay big. Uh, will be sponsored by businesses and by now who want to support uh, communication and the effort that we're doing in bringing the baskets to the main street. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Thank you. Questions from Manuela? Um, the businesses that will profit from this, you know, and participate all of the what do they contribute? 
done through the bottom, we've spoken to the uh, businesses with the taps yep. that have the universal taps, and they're all happy to support the payment of the water because that's something that will come from the rates. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will be approaching a lot of those individual businesses are the ones that will be sponsoring the actual payment of the baskets. So if, uh, for example, um, at the front of Bailey's, yeah. uh, there's four or five spots, and Bailey's are happy to contribute to uh, funding the baskets. It's the irrigation, yeah, yeah. the irrigation system that we're looking to replace. And we have been to all local businesses to ask for the quotes to do it. So we are local businesses that will be able to come back. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for coming along. We've been here for 25, 26 years, so I've um, yeah, town certainly changed quite a bit in that time. Looks a lot prettier than it used to, um, and some other challenges. Um, do you want the bouquet or the brick bat? You just had us with whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, okay, I'll give you the brick bat first. So, yeah. part, so you spoke to how it's going to make town more amenable, that people are going to slow down and what have you. But I mean, a real bugbear from a, 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 a resident point of view and somebody who works at on the Disability Action Group as well, is a number of signs that are in the road and have to be navigated by people on mobility scooters, on prams, and with visual impairment. And if, if, and if really baskets are going to make such a great difference, and we'll talk about that you know, in our discussion, um, then, then some feedback for the business association is to really be able to look at um, the individual businesses coming to be able to, to open up the pavement a little bit more. Council's got a bylaw and regulations that they're looking at maybe a metre and a half, which is technically probably two people. We don't want to get too close during the pandemic at the moment anyway, but most of the time people don't want to be up against each other and if they're walking more in a group than, than um, individually. So that, that's that's the, the brick back feedback there for the... Some, there is some work that has been undertaken at the moment in collaboration with, uh, collaboration with our community as well around the signage issue because we know that there is just stuff everywhere. Um, so it's very much around improving um, the things that we do want and then speaking to those businesses about some of the things that we potentially do. Sure. So yeah, it is, it is body of work, obviously, that's not included in this, yeah. but it is something that's happening alongside it. Mm -hmm. on, the, on, the, on the positive side, so I had business at Waipapa, I used to own the, the, the takeaways out there for 13 years and, and, and or operated for 13 years. Um, so part of what we did was provide the, the beautification in front that we put in seating and we put in gardens and we put in plants and we looked after them. And so part of that working together, whether that's a vision for um, or our kitty kitty or vision kitty kitty or the business association is looking at how individual businesses have. so some of them at the moment have provided some really awesome um seating and gardens and things we think about up near the butler center with the um sushi place is, is, is one um and that so so it's also to look at how businesses want to be able to um commit to the the vibrancy of the town themselves and and so i just you, you mentioned one thing about maintenance sorry what was that about last so, night so um nola has had a conversation with the nina who has let her know that the council will be funding uh the hanging of the baskets the maintenance of the baskets. so you know when they do the garden work they'll be snipping any dangly bits or anything like that that needs to be done at the same time and twice yearly fertilization of the baskets that's great i'm really happy for that can i just ask what the 200 and um 50 hours of volunteer value. Yeah, so uh, Nola's already actually done 500 hours worth of volunteer work. So she has gone into each of the businesses, and I can say just from the work that we did three weeks ago when we went to each of the businesses where the taps were, they took the day going into those businesses, explaining about what we're looking to do with the collaboration between our Kitty Kitty and the Business Association, and then the, the, like I said, the optics of how we want the main street to look. And, working together in the effort. So there's been a lot of time into um, speaking with the individual businesses in town. And then Noel has been doing the liaison with Plant Zone, who are helping with the baskets. Um, yeah, just, just the general background work of all that. It's been happening for two years? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long, a long, long time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Sorry. One, one small <coughs> observation, great presentation. I've known Nola for a period of time. I wouldn't dare put 
criticize any part of the presentation. Um, but but you might want to tone down what what the baskets will do. Um, okay. I, I, I've been waiting for you to get the, to the point that I'm going to solve world hunger. <laughs> 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 so I understand yeah, that. I'm just saying <laughs> in future presentation, possibly they look good. I'm not sure they're going to fit the rule of my car, but that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. I don't have a question, but what oh, sorry. Question about you, right? Yeah. Um, you had 38 current members, and I, I realise you've just recently. Recently yeah. resurrected the association. Um, I just wondered if, if be an opportunity if we were to fund this and to get this off the ground, whether those um, businesses involved could all consider becoming members of the association pitch. because <laughs> there are a lot of participants in this, but only 38 members. Yes, so, of conservation, so 100 yeah. percent Yeah, that will be something that we'll be definitely approaching. We wanted to be able to ensure we know that there's been a rocky history with the business association. So we wanted to make sure that when we were going to these businesses to ask them, it's a hard time for businesses at the moment, you know, going and asking for $150 for something where there hasn't been a lot of history to show what's been done. Um, if we can go and we can show some of these things, we're working on CCTV, we're working with um, Jackie with the street party. So we feel like we have something a bit more solid now to say yes. we're worth it. Mm. And I on a final note I several questions I can actually um, endorse the um, operational side of it. Nola emailed the mayor, the CEO, and I got copied into it and the CEO has given assurance that we would support the project and the community gets it off the ground that they will see to the operational expenses. So thank you. That's pretty well covered. Here. Wonderful. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much and likewise you're welcome to stay and um, we're just about through these. So we now have the um, Kitty Gymnastics Club, page 93. Jamie, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, kia ora everyone. Um, it's great to be here today. Um, I always enjoy and sharing the gymnastics living experience with, with the community board. And on behalf of the club, thank you for listening and um, for your support on time. So today we have applied to the board for a contribution towards the club fan. And I'll elaborate or to elaborate on some of the community the community benefits I described in my application and the project with opportunity. So the first one is uh, transportation for the kids from Kiki High School and Primary School. So this would allow us to re-establish what we um, called our Gym Connect service. And um, that benefited around 100 families. Um, and they didn't have to worry about their kids getting to court. And given there are no public buses in Kirikiri, um, one of the barriers to sport is transportation. So we wanted to get that covered for these kids. And, um, you know, obviously for parents and caregivers, it wasn't, uh, it didn't break up their working day. They didn't have to dash out of work. Um, you know, that 3.30 timing is a little bit awkward for some. Um, and so, you know, I always think about the gender side of things. Women are disproportionately impacted when it comes to these types of drop-offs. And that's that's just evidenced by who we see in our car park dropping kids off every day. Um, it's one that's worrying for parents as well. You know, it, the cost of living at the moment um, has increased with petrol and diesel costs. Um, we also, you know, selfishly, we want to keep our kids active and at the gym. Um, and one of our concerns is that um, sport might be something that drops off families' lists um, with the cost of living increasing. One of the seven pillars of inclusion is accessibility, and we believe it makes sports um, gymnastics more accessible. We know it's needed. We've experienced the demand. Um, you can be assured we're, we're not out to spend thousands of dollars um, and hope for the best. We've actually operated the service from um, Kitty Kitty um, School for several years, which Janet, our club manager, established. So 10 years um, prior to our, our old van running our community. Let's say. 
Um, there's also an environmental benefit. So transport emissions are the fast and growing source of greenhouse gas emissions in New Zealand and account for all 20% of all emissions we produce. Nearly 70% come from vehicles. So using a carbon footprint calculator, I, I did some research because I wanted to test my assumption that the, our gym connect van would be better for our environment. And as it happens, it is. So I calculated, I calculated that per year, there would be a higher number of emissions coming from the, the number of cars coming to the club, rather than the, the van doing two trips and even three trips. So cars were 6.6 .6 tonnes of carbon dioxide, compared to 1.3 tonnes for the van, or 1.7, 1.3 for two trips and 1.7 for three trips. So that has got to be a significant reduction year on year. Um, and actually, we've probably already contributed to the reduction. So pretty cool. There are also program benefits. One of the heartbreaking things of the pandemic is our early childhood centres had really struggled now to get their kids to the um, club for their session. That is down to um, mainly resourcing on their side. They can't spare the teachers now to come to the club. So what we want to do, and we've talked to them about our five, five early childhood centres, we've actually still got one coming forward, um, that we would come for them. And they are totally on board with that. Um, and finally, um, something that I'm incredibly passionate about, and I feel this funding will unlock, is a sense of belonging. So Sport England recently have released a piece of leading research um, that Sport New Zealand are taking on board. 80% of girls feel that they, they don't belong in sport. And so when I considered this, I was thinking, hmm, actually, you know, gymnastics, we've got to be on to a, a winner here. You know, surely we create a sense of belonging for our girls. But then I realised I was mistaken. Because I was looking inwardly at club operations and culture, not outwardly at the system culture. And I this really hit home when I we had our AGM on the weekend and Janet mentioned um, the Kirikiri High School honours and the badges were the the badges that the kids wear on their faces and uniforms. It took years for Janet, I didn't realise this, to um, get our gymnastics kids acknowledged and recognised alongside the other sports. Um, you know, gymnastics, you know, we've had, it's just an example of our fight for recognition and visibility and the value of the sport. Um, and, and whether that's symbolic on your school blazer or uh, resources like a van in the community, that visibility gives a sense of pride and belonging. And I know that that's what the coaches will feel. Um, uh, would you like to just share a little bit about our kind of band-aid because as I mentioned before, our old club broke down and we've got this band-aid process in place that Janet is actually leading. Band-aid is um, my band-aid. I purchased it personally myself for the club. Um, I've got, I see we used to do a walking bus for the um, youth in Mill Lane and um, that became too dangerous. with children and then there's the bands from the inside. <laughs> but so in the meantime um, we had to move to Waikapa um, down the building and the only way for us to transfer the children was to pick up children uh, must have borrowed a member's car in six seat and so I was like to get someone else in six seats and we're doing trips back and forth to try and get these children to the gym club and so that's so like Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, it's actually three trips. 
because you know it's it's a need. Your parents need school to protect the school. Um, also where we are, it's also also about management of road movements on the highway where we are. So it suggests those road movements of having vans, um, you know, all, all the car can walk can be um, just try a bus, but that sort of um, that didn't last too long. It's we <laughs> we have exhausted other options. That we, yeah, yeah, so we um, Janet has also tried working in with high school yeah. to um, see if we could um, tag along on their existing bus services, after school services, and that was a no go. We were told that wasn't um, feasible. Um, we, we we did actually have a bus for one term. Um, a community member had a bus, and so we, he worked in with us. Um, unfortunately, that fell through due to maintenance of that bus. So we have really tried to try and improve this accessibility. Um, and just just one further point I, I did miss, um, this would also be used for competitions. So some of the kids have to travel to Auckland. Um, sometimes that's a bit harder on the parents as well. And um, also coach trainings. Um, teams primarily for the youth that um, you know find it difficult to handle this the money. So Thanks, yeah. 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 Any questions? Um, yes. yeah. <coughs> Just notice that um, other sources have done that. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you intending to go out and buy it? Yes, definitely. Um, my, my thought, and this is where you probably see with the ATJ with the $2,000, um, I spoke to him regarding getting a van and that we'd like to be able to put businesses, um, magnetic signs or something on the van. So I was hoping once we get the van, it's more of a tangible um, thing to have, just go to the business and say that we're needing, um, you know, support the van. Um, I could think, obviously, the <laughs> yeah, but, um, if we get towards the van, then you know, if that's a shortfall, then the, the, we're hoping the businesses will come forward with sponsorship. So, definitely, we are. We have got a sponsorship um, program in place that we have never put out there. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's definitely a good point, and I know the top of what Janet is saying around. Um, it's kind of like a mobile marketing. So even if it like, was just like a park contribution, it probably didn't ask for quite a lot. Um, if it was a park contribution, we, you know, we could go to some different and say, look, here's some mobile marketing for you. Can you please give us two grand towards the van? Or, or just get, I don't know, five businesses on board? I don't know. We definitely do need to put the feelers out. Um, pub charity is another big one. Slogan would be, you know, these businesses are helping children be involved in school. You know, that would be businesses. We just want to run our van up alongside rugby and football. How <laughs> <laughs> yeah. frustrating for you to, you know, I look at most, most organisations that have come along here today. That, that, that it's a struggle just to be able to put on an event and coordinate stuff, and so that, that you know, to be having the outward face it and to be able to fundraise those things. So while you, were, I wasn't actually not paying attention. I was just seeing the terms of our rural travel fund and, and that because you've got a number of different things that you're doing with your uh, with your young people, and so that still comes back to alternative sources of funding that. You know, I don't know how much is regional and how much then you might be able to apply through through that through those funds. Um, and then also looking at Sport Northland, if they're going to they to acknowledge the benefit, and I know from a, from a community wellbeing advisor, so I understand those those studies and, and what have you, as to what degree that they can come in to support um, in an equitable way those codes like yourselves that need a hand up. Um, that don't, you know, that aren't the larger codes that have more funding from the number of, from the membership in it as well. So, yeah, I, I, I hear your pain. I, I, I yeah. see lots of opportunities for you, um, and it would be really great to be able to get those communities to come in behind you to, to sponsor something or 
or what have you um, to be able to, to, to fund that. And it's, it's a frustration if you can't share existing facilities. So if it was a school, but instantly I was thinking, well, Kitty Kitty High School has a van, um, the, um, the RSA has a van, you know. So if things are sitting there not being used, to me it's about community and, and community sharing and coming together. So, you know, it, it, it's those are the, the things that I, you know, I'd like to see that they came in to support you. Maybe it's you needing to communicate that out further as well. Um, Yeah, just a top, I'm going to stop here. Yeah. I mean, that's a bit of an other seat. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Right, so finally, we have um, Tim. Isn't it Tim Crawley, stage door, page 107? Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Tim Crawley. I'm president of um, Stage Door. This is Miriam Collins. Who is, the, who is directing Beauty and the Beast and at the moment very, very busy as you can imagine because we started rehearsing and planning and so on. So <clears throat> the 4th of December 2020 was the last show that we produced. Um, in between time, as we all know, there's been levels of lockdown, traffic lights, um, and so it's been very frustrating for us as a, a production group to put on the play and um, excite the members of our group. We have quite a large uh, group that we, we represent. Um, so when Miriam had this idea, the dream that she'd had for a while to produce and direct Beauty and the Beast, which is a, a very technical, fast moving um, musical with lots of singing, dancing and acting in it. Um, we all went, right, <laughs> it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of funding to get this show going. Um, can we do it? Bearing in mind, we were actually doing this initial decision making in the red traffic light. So the maximum audience that we could have here um, would be 100 people in the auditorium. And just working on the figures that we, that we had produced, we could just about squeeze it out provided we got enough funding to, to get us on the road. Part of that funding, uh, and as I said, it's quite a technical show, is the um, sound uh, technical here that we will need and the person or people that are involved in operating that equipment and producing the sounds that we need to, music, singing and all those sorts of things. And so that's the reason for our application to get some funding to help us get the right people to do that. And you see from our application, there's a copy of our an estimate of those costs from Tim Bell. Although he is um, based in Pongaree, uh, he will be working up here with us during the show time period. Um, and I know, I know from being involved with the Turner Centre myself that he is actually helping the Turner Centre rectory at the moment with other shows. So he is in the community, if you like. Um, but what I want to do now is just to hand over to Miriam briefly to give you an outline of what the show is and how it's working and how many people are involved in that group. Yeah. yeah. Hi, nice to meet you all this morning and thank you for listening to us and, and allowing us to to uh, share our vision for what we're doing. Um, Beauty and the Beast is a classic. It's a, a story that we all know and love. Um, and for myself, it was a, a huge passion to get another musical 
um, for our community. And I specifically wanted to get one that um, catered to a wide ranging audience. So not just a particular uh, group of people that would come to that, but a very wide range. Um, and because it's a classic story and it's a beautiful one for children as well, um, we've got the range from um, our retired community right through to our, our youngest members as well. Um, in regards to our cast, we have a really diverse cast. Um, we've got a cast of over 48 people. Um, and I did the little breakdown at the moment. And so we've got 24 adults in our cast. We've got six children under the age of 13. And we've got 18 young people who are in there. And both uh, the, the young uh, people playing uh, Belle, Beast, Lumiere um, as part of our leads. Um, and two young girls who are both nine, nine and 10 um, playing Chip the little teacup. So um, we have a huge diverse um, in terms of age. We also have diversity in terms of our cast. We have um, people who identify uh, with um, lo a range of cultures. So we've got somebody who's um, an Indian. We've got um, people from a Māori family in Whānau. Um, so it's a huge range of diversity um, in our cast. Um, the thing with uh, theatre is, unfortunately, as, as you can see from uh, the other people who've shared today, uh, funding for big shows is really difficult. And one of the key elements for any musical or big show that's going to go into the auditorium is obviously our tech side of things. Um, and uh, the support needed for that is um, really important because it's actually around health and safety and things like that as well. There's a lot of um, expertise that are needed. And so that's why we've gone to Tim Bell. Um, he's worked extensively in this theatre. He knows that theatre really well. Um, and he's also worked and donated a lot of time um, over and beyond what he um, has charged us for. I worked alongside him in Sound of Music. I was stage managing that. Um, the other thing is our we've got a team of over 12 tech uh, support people, so that's set building, costuming, um, all of that, and they're all locally based and community members. There's a big uh, majority of them who are volunteering their time as well and are not asking for any funding or payment for that time. Um, I think. Um, and the last thing I just wanted to say really briefly about the role of theatre. I've been involved in theatre for over five years now in our community and so have my children. My children um, have come along to be in shows with me from a very young age and um, theatre has been a lifeline for our family um, and we've had over, in the last five years we've had at least seven of our young people go into further arts education. Um, one of those is my son who's currently studying at NASDA which is the National Academy of Singing and Dramatic Arts in um, Canterbury um, and he's majoring in musical theatre. So he's doing a Bachelor of Performing Arts and so we've, I've seen the impact personally for my whanau and my family. Um, to the power of theatre and the power of community and coming together and building confidence and a self-esteem and identity uh, through the arts. And um, as I said, we've had you know numerous young people go onto that field. So it's not for me just about putting on a show, it's about um, building people to come to a sense of identity in and of themselves through this medium. Um, and it's a really powerful thing. We do become family. Our casts talk about each other as family. So it's, it's really important that we are able to put on a high calibre show that benefits not only the people in it, but the people who come to see it. Just, just thank you, Maru. Thanks, <laughs> just, just to finish off on the presentation, um, we have, are planning 10 shows, some matinees. Um, we're also discussing and trying to see if we can do it, is dedicating one or even two of those shows uh, purely for schools in the far north district area. Mm. Um, this was something that was done very successfully with um, Sound, Sound of Music, it. where um, uh, children from all over the far north district, Kaitaia to Kaitaia across to the west, to yeah. came in. We didn't. They didn't charge. No, nope. for it. Was so we gave those children an opportunity to see a show that they may not ever get the chance to see, and, and we want to try and do that as well. Mm. So, um, I guess that our original planning was probably a, a hundred people per show when we were in red, but now we're in orange. Mm. Uh, we don't really have the same restrictions on audience, so hopefully um, we are going to get a lot more than the thousand that we would have had for uh, 10 shows. And I also meant to say as well, sorry, my, my brain this morning, um, we've got our cast members range from um, living up in uh, Doubtless Bay, in the far north, Rawani, right down here to um, Kirikiri. 
So we've got people coming from Paihia and, and Russell and right up into the far north and they're travelling and committing to rehearsals Monday, Wednesday and Sundays. Um, and um, yeah, it's a huge commitment and they're passionate about it. So it is a diverse community that will be coming to see the show as well as being involved in it. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, guys. And I, I wanted to just acknowledge our other um, applicants here because the, my, my, my reflections and the ideas I said before, Tim's now spoken to part of that, which was in if there was no cost or something. What, what I'm going to raise in our discussions is to be able to look at if we support your application, if you're able to make some free tickets available, or, and that might be gold card users and beneficiaries. That would need to be teased out by what the sentiment of the board is. Mm. But that's a, so what we, we, we've talked about and flirted with here is around equity of being able to give people opportunities where they normally wouldn't get it. Mm. So whilst maybe $30 a ticket or $40 a ticket or $50 a ticket is okay for a certain part of our communities, others are starving and, and not able to mm. be able to put all of the kai on their tables, pay their power bills and what have you, mm. and COVID has exacerbated that. So if we're looking at the well-beings which, which local government is required to, then we'd also look at the social well-beings that we are able to enable in that as well. Mm. So thank you for um, raising the prospect of, of that. I don't know what that will look like. And um, if you could stay for our discussions, I, I hope that we can actually come back to you and, and, and tease out that opportunity if there is a, an appetite for that with the board. So um, thank you. Thank you. And just to let you know as well, um, regarding our ticketing as well, because for me as a mum, um, and I'm, I'm also, I have been a teacher at the high school and now teach at Harvest Christian School, Primary School, I understand the need in our community. So when we set our ticketing prices, we, um, based on what we needed in terms of um, covering costs, we could have raised our tickets quite high. We chose not to. So we've actually created um, a ticket price for seniors and students. We've um, done the same for children and we've also created a family pass for two adults, two children at a reduced cost so that um, we can get as uh, many people to come and enjoy the experience of theatre. For me, it's not about um, making profit. We want to have enough to cover our costs um, and be able to potentially invest a small amount back into the next show. But it's certainly not about, um, yeah, anything other than reinvesting into our young people and family that come along to our theatre group. Can I just say that the I'm sure you can make a hazardous guess. Anyway, the squeak lane. Are you referring to squeak lane? Yeah, squeak lane, exactly. You can't remember. Oh, I can remember. I just, you know, I. If I think we're going around in circles, I'll have to say. We can actually go back and check on the squeak lane, which is. What was the road naming?
Bay of Islands Fonera Committee would accept the report outlining the allocation of the immunity voting and town unification budgets for financial year 2021-2022 and 2022-2023. And B, that approves the allocation of the immunity voting budget for financial year 2021-2022 as prioritised by the community board. C, approves the allocation of town unification budgets for financial years 2021-2022. 2023 as prioritised by the community board. Do I have a mover? Yeah. Mover. Second yeah. by Jay. Thank you. Is there a question? Yes. Any discussion around this? Monday and Wella. Um, I don't know. We've got the report writer online or somewhere, but I wanted to. Ah, uh, no, we don't. I want. Yes, we do. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Janita, Janita is here and so am I. This is Helen Ronaldson. I can't hear you, but I'm asking the question anyway. Um, provide, on the, on the second page, provide coloured tables, shade and umbrellas. What is a coloured table with a bus or foreshore? What colour? Jeanette, how's your connection? That's my question. And the other one was new bins, including recycling. I always been told that um, council won't provide recycling bins because it's too complicated and people are not educated enough to use recycling bins. Now I'm really excited to see recycling bins there. I'd like to that, um, that confirm if it's actual proper recycling bin. And uh, one more thing I'd like to just make a note of is Are you, are you there? My um, connection's a bit scratchy. Jeanette England here, sorry, the report writer. Um, the meeting room has gone on mute. Aisha's... Um... Okay, so um, going back to the first question, the colour for Russell, that's to be confirmed with the community board and um, also with the community and Russell. So if we don't want, if you don't want coloured tables, we don't need to have them. As an introduction to the report, I just like to um, say that the items that I've listed um, are only there um, because they're things that have been identified in the past. And with these budgets, we haven't spent all of that money in the past. So I've just put this together as a um, an idea of what we could be spending the money on um, with regards to the to the recycling bins, that's a discussion that we would need to have with the um, operators for the collection of the rubbish. So uh, that would be a further discussion to have. But just as, an, as a um, precursor, this report is just to give you some information and we're not asking you to spend the money this financial year. Um, it's just as a, an example of what we could be spending the money on and some ideas of, of where we could go. It's Helen here. We're actually also just trying to plan ahead to make sure that you do get to spend the money rather than us rushing at the last minute when we get towards the end of the year um, and we, we don't have a plan in place. So, yeah, we're actually just trying to plan ahead. Thank you. Uh, Kilda, I had raised this in an email, but just on page 24 at the bottom, under amenity lighting, sorry, I'm saying this loud because I'm wearing a mask and I don't know what your sound like is on your end. But uh, the Taumata Makuku Reserve, two lights as part of the reserve development. I just wanted to check that that's the two reserves and the amenity lighting is the entrance way. So one light for one reserve. 
on the entranceway of that reserve and across the road, the other light for the other entranceway, because it just says one reserve here, but there's two. And that was from the site visit that we did about two months ago. And I also wanted to add to the town beautification, that same site visit, uh, it was discussed that the town beautification uh, look to install a fence at the Taumata Makuku Reserve around the playground. At the moment, there's a temporary orange netting. So that was the other thing that was raised by Anna and co. And I also wanted to follow up on the Moirua Nisbet Park playground. Still does not have a shade sale. Is this where we mentioned that? Or is it somewhere else? Uh, thanks, Manuela. Um, with regards to the uh, Taumata Makuku development, we have a site meeting next week, I believe, um, where we will be meeting with the consultants who have been brought in by um, uh, SPMP to do a full develop, redevelopment of that area so that we, we're not just doing piecemeal um, bits and pieces, it's so that we can have a proper plan going forward. And we will be looking at the whole area, so both reserves. I mean, if it's one light for each reserve, that's what um, we, what we'll look at. But it depends on the um, the the d development plan that um, the consultants come back with. So that'll be discussed further at the site meeting. Nisbet Park has a, a shade sale planned for this financial year, and I understand that that project is still underway. Oh, so are you saying that that will be done this year? Nisbet Park should be completed this financial year. Yes, and, okay. and, um, so one of the concerns the community keeps coming in every year for the last five years that I've been on this board has been that their uh, children's hands are getting burnt on the metal of the playground in the summer because there's no shade sale. So it'd be great if I could go back to them at the conclusion of this meeting and let them know that this summer that shade sale will be installed. Is that what you're saying? So the shade sale was in this current financial year and it's currently sitting with project delivery. So they have um, they have the, the funding available to get that shade sale installed. So it should be in before summer. Thanks. We can we can check that though, Manawai, and come yes. back and confirm it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to follow up on um, the amenity lighting. Um, so, uh, bottom of page 24. So, um, Jeanette, you'll be aware that in our discussions for the Kiri Kiri domain, that we um, flirted, requested, begged for lighting um, for the car park in front of the bowling club and uh, next to the, the domain there. Yes, that's, yep, I'm aware of that. Yep, so I'd like to include that in our recommendation back to put an amendment in that we um, include the additional light in the budget moving forward as well. So that, that was the uh, first line, the kitty kitty domain, two lights required um, as part of that um, project that's being done at the moment. And that would more than likely use up a majority of the funding depending on uh, the cabling that's there at the moment. Clarified state, are you referring to additional lights over and above the two recommended lights here? So there's two lights that have been identified as, as, as weren't covered by the PGF funding because we've blown, well, someone's blown the budget and therefore um, there needed to be more lighting. But it was identified in, the, in our discussions and, our, and many times that there was a safety issue from both the bridge club and the bowling club who used that car park at night, but there's no lighting to cover that car park. It's a public car park. Um, and that there was a potential of putting a light pole towards the, the boundary of the domain and the car park so that it could have shone onto the car park and onto the domain. So this will be a budget issue as we can enter the house depending on the source. So we're talking about next year's budget. We've been talking about this light and the need for one for a year. So I'm, I'm reluctant to let that go for another year. Um, it's just down to cost as to how many we can do under this amenity. So the amenity budget has just is not specific about things like the footpath lighting and boardwalk lighting and things in other areas. 
And so if there's a budget, I'd like to see that we prioritise that maybe they get, I mean, we don't know in the boardwalk likely how many lights that's going to be covering. The report doesn't cover it, and I'm quite disappointed with the level of detail in the report. So in order to be able to make a recommendation that the, with the budget for the, the the following financial year includes a light for um, that car park on Cobham Road. So, so the first um, one on, on the list is for the Kitty Kitty domain, um, and there's currently eighteen and a half thousand dollars in the budget, um, which could be allocated towards that that light. So part of the reason for this report coming to you today is actually to get for to understand from you guys what the priority is for spending that money, um, and then we can go and cost it and see how much of your list we can get through. If the if you want if if there's we we've this list has been put together based off information that we have and we know, um, but if there's other things that you want us to consider, then we can see. Basically, it's a matter of you give us the priority list and we let you know how much of that can be achieved with the budgets that are available. So, what I'm hearing here is that we've got projects underway at the moment that obviously have a budget shortfall. Mm. Um, it's going to prevail that we need to complete those projects as a priority. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, yes, but there's, but there's two things around this. One is that we identified the need for this light, and that's a design issue, as I see it. And so the project managers or what have you gone and, and allocated the lighting poles and the position in different places in the domain. But I also understand, and Lane, correct me if I'm wrong, um, and Frank, that we are still looking for further um, annual budget or LTP budget to complete the domain. And so if this is specifically just for the lighting parts, so I'd rather prioritise a light that hasn't made it through all of our discussions even though we've been discussing it with staff to date, that is a priority for safety uh, for users of that car park at night. Unless we need some hanging baskets here, that will solve it. Yeah, well, um, I, some lights in the middle. Sorry, I must have misread this report then. And I was reading it as this is what we're getting. What's listed, but obviously we don't because we do not know how much each light will cost and or how much each location will cost to 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 be carried out. So now I'm disappointed again. I was excited to see all these lights going on. Eighteen thousand dollars not buy you many lights, will it? It's not the lights that cost the money, it's the cable that cost the money. Yeah, well, well that's part of the lights, but so we get Nothing. But in some oh, cases, sorry. the cabling is already there as part of another project, and that's why the lights are before more lights will be available if that's the case. So, and again, that's why we're asking for what your priority areas are, so that we can then assess the actual need and the, and determine the value. Well, you never ask us priority. If we wouldn't ask the question, we would have never come to this point saying that we need to make a priority. And we do that with footpaths, and we know how much they cost and how long it will take them to put in. Maybe you could go to the same exercise with the lights. So we actually do know how we can prioritise them because you can't really prioritise something if you haven't got the money. Mm -hmm. So a number of these have come out of our strategic plan. Um, I recognise some of them. Yeah. Um, what does concern me though is um, the fact that we have items in here that um, obviously you know about that we don't know about that the board hasn't um, been informed about which uh, is particularly I'm referring to the Tamana Makuku Reserve Development. Nothing's come to the board the only thing we have discussed in relation to Tamana Makuku was putting our total footpath budget towards that in the settlement area and request for lighting to accompany the um, pedestrian safety along that footpath, um, which I don't see in here at all. So is the reserve development had something different again? There's two or three mentions to a reserve development that hasn't come to the board. So the Taumata Makoko reserve development is is one and the same, um, which um, Manuela was at the meeting and we put another one next week. So we haven't finalised anything in that reserve as yet. But we're 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 looking at providing the lights, those two street lights. Okay, we'll 
we can't really prioritize something we don't know anything about. So, just sorry, Chair, this was a site visit that all of the people who were involved with um, dealing with some of the health and safety issues along the road, the speed bump. I think Roddy Pihema came to the board a year or two ago and expressed some of the problems they had with the playground being installed in the wrong place and how they would like um, council to mow the lawns in the reserve and currently they're doing it themselves. So I think all of those, the combination of those things and ongoing health and safety concerns along that stretch of road and it, with the crossing of our children going across from reserve to reserve and to the bus shelter, there were already a number of plans in place and they had to get all of the people together. And I believe I sent out some photos from that site visit and we were just waiting on further corridor and feedback from Ken Ross to come back regarding the installation of the drinking fountain and a few other things. That's the site visit you're talking about, isn't it? Yes, it is. So that has come from when Roddy came to the board and it's progressed from there. In respect of the drinking water fountains at Northland BHB, we had uh, and bought a number of fountains as part of our water as the best choice and what have you. There was one drinking water fountain left that was going to be going to Kyle, but because of resolutions around her, um, supply of water that now I'm just emailing to try and find out my previous boss would have known where it is so that he's left. So um, there may be one drinking water fountain that we can have sponsored into that community. Um, so I'll, I'll find that out just uh, Thank you. But I was going to suggest that my, uh, by the incomplete information and the state of where we're feeling that perhaps we need to let this lie on the table with the with the uh, clarification needed of what our lighting priorities are. Perhaps that we need to have a workshop online Zoom or something around that. If it, because I'm disappointed that light hasn't, that the, the car park light hasn't been captured and the discussions is quite as transparent that there's a lighting budget, but the rest of the domain improvements will be funded from a different source that would open up uh, the funding opportunities for that common road car park. So, in order to move this forward, um, Jeanette, can we accept this report without um, the specified allocations? Sorry, sorry, thanks. You're breaking up. I'll answer that, Jeanette. That's fine. Um, Belinda, yes, you can accept the report, and we can have an action item that we will confirm the priority listings. Um, with input from yourselves and what we can do is also do some assessment at, at a high level of what those light costs are and I, we will all we can also have a look for the Kerry Kerry domain because I think um, uh, Member Hookway is right in terms of the fact that additional funding was requested. I need to confirm if that included these lights or not, um, because it was originally on some design. And then the Taumata Makuku Reserve does have some budget for reserve development. And we just need to see if it can be stretched to encompass these lights as well. But that will be after a meeting from next week. So we can put a couple of actions that we can have a look at the costing and funding options for some of what is in this list now. And if the if the um, community board want to consider what their priorities actually are, and then we can we can merge the information from those actions and come up with a plan. Thanks, Helen, for that clarification. Sorry. Yeah, I just want to hear all of that. Sorry. Thanks. Okay. I just want to thank uh, our staff for coming out to that site meeting and for hearing the Taumata Makuku community express their fatigue and their long, long wait, all these delays every year or decades on getting things done and some of the health and safety issues addressed. So thank you for coming out and we we'll look forward to an invitation to that site visit, everyone. Uh, you got my email, I'm sure. Kilda. Thanks, Jeanette. Minawai, you move that and Dave seconded it.
I'm quite happy with the recommendation of B and C. Sorry, I said, did I say that one? But B and C are changed to uh, note the allocation and of the amenity lighting budget and note the allocation of the town beautification budget. And we can put a note on our um, action sheet at the end of the meeting. David, are you happy with that? I guess if it means up that what is recommended is not set in stone. Yes, because we'll have an action confirming that we prioritise the listings and that staff obtain costings, and we can discuss that later. Yep. Right, so moved and one a second a day. So we are accepting the report, noting the allocation of the amenity lighting budget and noting the allocation of the town beautification budget. So all those in favour, raise your hand. Against? Carried, thank you. All right, page 28, item 2. Chief Chief's Chief's report uh, that the Bay of Islands Fund and Community Board note the reports from Chief Person Bill and Seem to be stepping up. Okay. Um, 
not a lot that council can do. Uh, although we have asked for um, lists in relation to establishments that have applied for a change of use to be required, um, and that hasn't been included in the hands yet. So it's going to take a collaborative effect in, um, with all the agencies, MSD, corrections, um, council, police, to make a of licenses. <laughs> And I just have um, somebody actually contacting me over your, and it's funny, I picked it up over your very old RIPs of the outside the heritage police. Yes, yes. Is that something we can move on with that? Because we're getting this here again, and it is a hazard. Mm -hmm. So that's actually, um, I have yeah. left that there because the amount of staff resources that went into the outcome of that, it went through everything from monitoring to legal and and has a legal opinion on it that, that the um, establishment has no legal right to use that portion of the front, front yard okay. and footpath uh, with the establishment and the pedestrian traffic safety issues. They were, they were fine for a while when we had the rope up and the wallards, they got vandalised and they were replaced a few times and then trucks started backing over the wallards and they just got demolished. So it's staying there because I don't want council to spend more ratepayer resources on revisiting that and if there's a big fat file there until this issue is resolved I just like to keep that alive but still doesn't matter how many years it's going to take uh Tahi are involved in it as well because there's legal entry there's no curb and channeling there's legal entry footpath straight onto the state highway so there's a number of issues there but it's the resources the time and money that have gone into that that we don't want to be revisited these things and it's something But it seems to be still an issue in the community because it is. they come to me on the other side of the dark yes. border. But it's cool, it is an issue. Yeah. That's it. Right, anything else? Moving on to Matt Willis. Questions there for you? Thank you for posting your coloured pics because I forgot to put mine on the high level of the smart things. I just wanted to add that the, uh, the coastal walking track in Russell, uh, when the big pine came down, the track was shut for a long time. Uh, council now built um, stairs over the pine that fell down, and it's open again, which is great, so people don't walk on the road anymore. And then we had the still ongoing drama with the Department of Conservation. Uh, removing all the bridges out of the Harrison Reserve's walking track because they just decided that track is not needed anymore. Um, big, big uproar in the community, and they said they're going to meet with the community. If you're interested, if you want to meet, they're never going to reply. They met with a few people <coughs> and came to the they came together and said, oh, well, they've got to keep the track open without the bridges and it'll be just the trapping line, which is nothing. So I'm disappointed with that. And I know council got approached over it, but And I see the tenders have gone out for the repiling of the walking, the bridges down at um, Miss Motor Camp. And you've got a date and promise for that um, the high year end of the April going to be for the motor camp end to be done by the September. Yeah. 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 So that, that's the tenders that's gone out, so obviously by the September. I'm still getting um, complaints over that date. Yeah. 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 Any other questions, Lane? Look for the school. Is that a, a typo there where you say schedule for January 2021? But that's what it was originally scheduled. Yeah, it had. was rescheduled. Yeah, I got the paper. I actually pulled the paperwork out. I got it with me, and it's just. Is there anything else that work? No. Um, <laughs> occupation visa exit again across the road, and I had communication with Council of Stratford telling me that final polling is not involved with this project. Um, however, which which project? So the project is meant to pay for the full pass by the oh, school. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, but it seems they're still involved in the project managers. 
It is so murky, it's not funny. The condition of consent, so the latest that I had X P months ago now that it would be done um, June, July, whenever we saw all those, we July for this year, yeah. but of course the protest has held that up, and it is a condition of consent, so oh. it must, must be done. I know it must be done, but they've been telling us that for a long time, and then the thing just so short for stuff like that, I could have done it with my hand by now, so we you know about that, yeah. Um, I do have a question. Janet and Helen, are you still there? I just wondered where, um, probably outside of the square, with regard to marking those um, car parks outside of 10 schools. Oh, I, I wondered, I actually had that down whether that could be captured in the, um, the town beautification. I, Funding, I but it's not capital. No, I, I, I put that RFS in, then I'm going to lease it. And it got shelved because there's no budget for it. So there's a few car parks. And since then, they, they remarked the whole road from Okeara all the way to Tapika and didn't do the car park. Um, so I asked for it to be reopened again. And they came back to me and said, there's no budget for it, keep it in. 10 car parks, it's 10 lines that need to be done. Um, but the tennis club is getting their new um, clubhouse and they're going to make that a condition of their rental schools, which I find. Yeah. Deep breath, thank you. Yeah. Wrong. So wrong. <laughs> That's all I don't know. Nobody can no, tell me. They're, it's, yeah, it's, they're perfect car parks, and we've got shortage of car parks everywhere. But if you mark them, you get the people to park in the right spot. Yes. And, you know, it's so, so simple, really. And now is the time because it's not busy. We'll look into that and see if they are uh, designated car parks on the schedule, and so why they're not being painted. Maybe that they they're not, I think they probably haven't lost the uh, um, bylaws, the parking bylaws. I think they've been, I just think they've been. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Did you hear a little bit earlier? I have to commend you, Bruce. Hey, I have to commend you. No updates on the RFS is uh, going to be lodged in any way. I sent a swag in earlier this week again, just revitalizing another one. Okay, And can you check out the uh, the LTP line item for the renewal on your Kaio playground toilet? Can you find it? Down the side oh, of the
So just a question on the poll, is it that, that is a poll in need of resources that community board can fund? Council provides resources that community board can So for our understanding was that there were symptoms part four reserves were reserves that were the gate or rats would be received and installed for month. So at the moment the project is not going to be. So 
So EFCO was going to come along with pay for it. A significant partnership. This is my call. Okay, thank you. Shane, see if I'm having the discussion or you made the decisions. Yeah. It is a shame. There was huge support for the project and a lot of gratitude to receive the scaffolding from the Sydney Working Group. Um, I think it was about having the time to consult with the full community adequately and um, perhaps in, retro in hindsight looking at somewhere dry to store the ramps so that they wouldn't suffer aging or weather damage in the time that it took to have that full consultation and look for a good site. Every time we looked at a site on the reserve itself, Nisbet Park was mentioned so that people could see it, so that some of the people were using the skateboard ramp that might be installed there would be visible, so there would be lighting, a whole lot of things. I think there were some concerns in the community that damage would occur to the other parts of the reserve as a result of having the skateboard ramps installed. So it was a timing issue for many people. But we did have the partners come to the table and ultimately the community made the choice that Simpson Park Reserve wasn't suitable. And when they looked at um, the park, it was so much my the cost while we're doing that, the response from the council was that they would go ahead with us. So it wasn't seen as suitable to relocate them to another. So at this point, it's not happening. At this point, it's not happening. Okay. The committee has said the community are not happy for it to be placed on the reserve. There are, there's a huge support for it to be, but the, there's a strong voice out there that doesn't want it placed on the reserve. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that. It's a shame because that would have too, to actually transport that. Yeah, and that was a timing that was a timing issue. That was something that we put our hands up for, and I don't think anyone really took into account what how that was going to be done. COVID was happening, the speed at which it had to happen. I don't believe either the Domain Working Group or the Simpson Park Reserve Committee understood what it meant to work in those COVID conditions and how that would ramps would be received or transported. I think the assumption was that council would pay for that and also maybe look at how um, the timing would work for consultation as well. So there were a lot of learning for everyone. But I don't believe that that, um, I believe that our, the Simpson Park Hall Committee is very grateful to the Domain Working Group for considering gifting and also to AFCO for coming forward and pledging such a um, supportive financial partnership. And it does come down to working with the community in the end. Okay, so moving on, James reports. Okay, so Bruce moved, <coughs> did a lot of seconded. But I was on the community board note with the GPC. Moving out, Mills and Owen. All those in favor? Against. Right, we're going to move on. We're going to skip to item 7.4 funding applications. Can we do the statements, please? Page 114. That is the statement. Sorry, but the community. Sorry, but it's the same. funding applications. Okay. Statement of community. Right. The Bay of Islands Funger Community will receive the report entitled Statement of. Bay Islands Funger Community. First line is the unused funds for the duck race, which has been considered and is actually No, but both. So I see it's rescinded and there. So doesn't that count twice? I Sorry. Yeah, the, the figure I used takes into account that the amount was rescinded and it's available. Okay. 
Or do I? Because it's twice a line item, so it's added up twice. Okay, all right. Is the report twice available? Oh, I think it's a mistake. It does, and you, I added it up, but there's actually, there is a discrepancy of $1,974, least. So, and, and, and I mean, that was one of the, the number of questions that I had around the, the lack of clarity and the fact that we haven't got the report writers resourcing our meetings is really frustrating. So, you know, if, we, if we've got questions, they're not answered today, it's another month before we can get some clarity on these things. So recognising that this is the end of the, coming up to the end of the financial year, um, that we have people waiting for money, um, that we have money here, and we have implications for if we use the money or not. Um, I'm pretty disappointed around that, but can we have some clarity as to what will happen with our budget? Well, if something is rescinded after this meeting today, it will go into the next financial year. So next financial year? The current balance on the table, if not spent, will be lost. Page 36, because I've reversed the order paper, sorry, um, members wanted to put this first. So, what you're saying is what's on page 36 uh, is the actual. Yeah. So, essentially, Madam Chair, if we agree to everything recommended today, we have used all our money. Yes. Water. Just we have way more applications than we have guns for. I've got the, the recommendations. Oh, yeah. so the recommendation is only a recommendation like everything we do at Subtask. No, no, my point is if we agree to the recommendations as recommended, does that mean we have used all of the funds we have available as at today between now and the end of Essentially, yes, but in reality, no, because we have had one application withdrawn which was the Bay of Islands Community Centre Association. So with that exception. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. What, so I'm, I'm trying to also understand it's where there's two hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars uncommitted, but there's only twenty-six thousand available. 
does a 329,000 include the 85,000 for placemaking? It's different for some people. There's 15 there, and there's a report for the balance in the agenda for the 85,000. I, I, I can read what, the, what the, the, each report says, but the reports don't, don't um, correlate. One report saying we've got far more money um, uncommitted. So this is ASAT 30th April. Yeah. So. June now. Yeah. Yeah. So Catherine, you, Catherine, you just clarify this. You've actually the reports for the 30th of April, but you've actually done the figures up to today, correct? Today. Right. Because you did the meeting on the 5th of yes, May. Yes, May. Not in here. Welcome, Council Report. So to say, clarify that for you, Dave? Still make the report. It's not up to date. It's up to date as at 30th of April. Look at that up to date. If you add up the figures, it's not correct. So I don't know. I understand it's not to date, yes. but it still does not add up properly. So what I, what I would like to see is just a supplementary paper given to the board today that actually shows the difference between the, the April and now. So, Catherine, if you've worked that out yourself somewhere, with, I guess that would be out of transparency, so it would be really useful for us to have a copy of that. Oh, that's what we funded last month. Okay. I mean, the, the thing is, this report is not going to no, no, that's why I'm, I'm yeah. saying that we haven't got the report writer available to us. And so, no. whilst, whilst we have committed funds last month, then there is knowledge of that and could have gone into yes. this report oh, before the deadline. Yeah. 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 I don't think we need to crunch our own numbers from meeting previous meetings. That's shouldn't have to. No, that's what we've got. No, no well, that, that so, would be my point. Um, we move this report. Recommendation. The amendment date, thirty of April, twenty twenty two. Do you want to continue discussion around this? Because I'd like to put it to vote. All those in favour of the recommendation, put your hand up. Against? Yes. Yes, please. I'm mindful that lunch is here and I'm also mindful that our Manukere are probably going to take the but put it all around there. Okay. I appreciate that, but we have been sitting for two and a half hours. I'm just mentioning it. I would you be happy to wait 20 minutes to half an hour for our discussions around the funding at the point? So we done it for the time, no problem. <laughs> we are also screening more on YouTube if you, if you wanted to go to home and watch it. Welcome to stay. Okay, with that, I'm going to adjourn. Much air to the members at one o'clock. Thank you.
lunch break after this morning. Now we're moving into item 7.3, our funding applications for the day. I'm going to change the order paper just slightly for the benefit of those of you that have been very patient and waiting um, for our speakers here. Thank you. We'll deal with um, firstly um, Aroha music. Okay, there's, there's actually an amendment in that. So, excuse me, I'll just go back to the... So, you, so your name, so we're on the second recommendation, uh, but before I put that, I just want to amend it. Um, you're not Aroha Island Music. Um, you, yeah. Music Society. Thank you very much for that clarification. I was a little confused this morning. I'm going to put these individually. So the first one is um, that the Bay of Islands Whangaraa Community Board approves a sum of $5,000 plus GST for Pickable be paid from the board's community grant fund account to Aroha Music Society for costs towards the 2022 concert series to meet the following community outcomes. Communities that are healthy, safe, connected and sustainable and proud, vibrant communities. I'll put this. Do I have a second though? Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> Discussion. Yep, Dave. Amendment to this one and the other two applications that relate to the cultural event. We're just dealing with this one at the moment. It's going to be the same criteria for each of the three events. We'll deal with them individually. Yeah, yep. So, you want to put your amendment now? You're foreshadowing it. Thank you. I'll talk with each of the three different applicants, so this one will deal with our um, music society and what we've not. What, what we've discussed is the, is the concept of some equity tickets, some free ticketing. Okay, so I've proposed that for people with a community services card. Um, we're acknowledging that throughout the COVID uh, pandemic so far that the arts have um, been hit in terms of um, able to just get on with, with doing what, the, what they do. Um, we're also acknowledging an impact on our community the tickets and things for some Fano is very high. So all three parties uh, uh, and out of one have also acknowledged that um, there is fair capacity in the event to be able to make um, some free tickets. And uh, if we speak to the other ones, already you've got three under 18. For the sake of my uh, addition to each of these uh, applications, would be that each application makes available a certain number of free tickets for people with community services card and or people under 18. So it's just that it's uh, not favouring any, any one of them. So um, what I invited each of them, and so that's why I can't speak to the, the motion is to say how many that might be, how many tickets might be reasonable given that one one applicant has eleven shows. One applicant has a, a, a few a few shows. I'm on sort of looking at one of these, so that it wouldn't be fair to say everyone gets away a hundred tickets or something like that. However, I think that it's part of our our um, commitment under the local government there to meet the <coughs> social well-being of our communities. And one way that we can do that in an equitable way is to be able to sponsor some tickets. And so to be able to put that as a condition of our supporting these, these events here at the Turner Centre. And I want to admit that in, 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 in all past discussions, I still have a concern over the fact that overall we're still subsidising the Turner Centre. But in terms of rate payers, if you're like me, I pay $80 a week in rates. I'd like to think that something is going to our, our whānau who uh, wouldn't normally have these opportunities. And so that's that's the nature of the amendment that I'd like to put um, on each of these three applications that we're going to consider in, in relation to the concerts. So just a question on that, Dave. Thank you for that clarification. 
Um, the first one that we're dealing with at our music society does have, if I'm looking at the right one on page 51, um, they actually already do offer free for under 18. So are you just talking community services card right. discount? Yep. Yeah, but I, I, I'm proposing the same wide eyed each of them, so let's add more. dealing with them individually. I get your take where you're coming from. Yeah, individual applications, we're dealing with them individually. Dave, should we stipulate it? I, I prefer not to saying and or they can decide themselves and I also feel like they can decide themselves how many tickets they will make available. Well, I, I think the same. To, to the best of their ability to make front seating available to Community groups yeah. and or you and might we make it part of the reporting back? Yeah. Sure, they have the time. Any other members want to comment on that, Brad? No, I, I'm I'm um, if you have a question, we they have had their speaking time and all okay, fairness. Okay, but then they have given that for the speaking time to address the, the condition that I'm um, adding to the funding application. We're going to spend more time arguing about this than we will simply direct questions to the, the person. Put, you can put your question, yes. So, so we talked about and or. Um, are you? You can be the and. It can be eighteen and under. Yes. And and community service. Very Okay. Thank you. So that would be the nature of my um, do that with taking my phone. Okay. Say that um, we we, we approve the sample. Yes. With the condition that um. Available facts or had no, no cost to people with a community service account. Is that the reporting back that we would need to see? As we should do with all of those things, I don't think we apply a, a, a criteria to it that's reported back in the, in the yeah. same place. Two people attended, 200 people attended, whatever it is, that would be, that would be great. Yeah. Get used to that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. The tickets are made available free of charge to community right. cart holders. Well, they're called community cart services. Right. 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 Community right. services. Community 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 services. So that's as they've also noted that the tickets are bought through the centre here, so that's able to be presented when buying the tickets. Okay. So the, the mechanics are okay. Yes. For okay, so we now have that the Bay of Islands Ongara Community Board approves a sum of $5,000 plus GST if applicable with the condition tickets are made available at no cost to people with a community service card. And be paid from be the paid from the community board's grant fund account to Adaha Music Society for cost towards 2022 concert. I'm happy to to take that with the amendment. Is the seconder happy to? Yeah. Sorry, Manuel, I second it. So I move. Manuel, I second it. I'm going to put that to the vote. There's no further discussion. All those in favour, put your hand up. Against, carried. Thank you. Thanks for that, Dave. Now we will move on to the second application, which is um, that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board approve the sum of $5,000 plus GST if applicable be paid from the board's community grant fund to Bay of Islands singers for cost towards the 2022 concert series. Do I have a mover? Yes. Lane, second Bruce. It's on page... 
Yeah. So, Lane, if you're happy to move that $5,000 from the Bulls Community Grant Fund to Bay of Island Singers, the condition that tickets are made available at no cost to people with a community services card. Bruce, you a seconder, you're happy to amend that. Right, I'm going to put that to the vote if there's no further discussion around that. Those in favour, raise your hand, please. Carried, thank you. And we go to our uh, final item, um, stage door, which is on page 108. Sorry, I'm flicking to the end of those applications. <clears throat> So we have uh, that the Bay of Islands Whangaroa Community Board approved the sum of $5,000 plus GST for applicable be paid from the board's community grant fund to stage door for costs towards beauty and the beast. Do I have a mover? Manuela? Seconder, Lane? Um, so uh, we're committed to have a full show to take the five to four hundred tickets to go to the uh, schools. Primarily uh, take those SR schools first within our region um, and then pass that out to higher SR schools. Um, so we will uh, liaise with school with that and make sure that there's one good show, which is our um, Monday evening, available for them. And I'm also prepared to offer um, some special help for the students. To get that on the Monday, Saturday. Yeah, we've got a, a costing for adults, yep. students, and uh, uh, yep. and then a uh, child's cost. So that's a yep. little cost. And that was at just the Monday matinee, or the community service type holders for the. Right. So the Monday matinee was for school children, school sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need the Monday matinee condition put in the resolution as well, Dave? Um, you do. You have that in your application, you want to add that, okay. <clears throat> towards lighting costs. Cool. Which one's spelling? Which one? Matinee. M-A-T-I-N-E-E-E. Um, it's not good. <laughs> 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 so a Monday matinee. Um, music and a mo Monday matinee. Um, no, we've got that here. Uh, Monday matinee um, for school children, is it? Look, the Thank you. Right, so we have in this one that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board approved the sum of $5,000 plus GST if applicable uh, with the conditions with the conditions tickets are made available at student cost to people with a community services card. Is that correct? 
and a Monday matinee for school children with a priority given to lower decile schools and it be paid from the Community Grants Fund account to stage door for costs towards Beauty and the Beast. Okay. So, Manuela, if you're happy with that amendment and Lane, yep, I'm the happy. seconder, yep. I'll put that to the vote. There's no more discussion. All those in favour? Right. Against? Carried. Sorry for your long wait and oh, glad if we could you. assist you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. So, I think that's really, you know, I'm really heartened that, that you know, that each of those three months had the full support. Um, and I, you know, I recognise that these are different signs. And so today, I think that's a good Well done, Dave. Yeah, We've all agreed unanimously, Dave. Thank you. Right, so I'm going to put this next recommendation. We're back to the first application that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board approve the sum of $15,000 plus GST if applicable, be paid from the Board's Community Grant Fund account to Business Pay here. Incorporated for cost towards the inaugural Matariki Festival 2022. Do I have a seconder? Aye. Aye. Question around this. Any questions? Any clarification? No. <coughs> Bruce? Yeah, I'll go on the past point through my community. I've got to say that. That's all my people spoken to. They were not in favour of it. Um, been down by them and said it's from big down there and have rather seas at the small. I told them what the budget was, they just said on my goal. Um, did the um, bus include your area? I don't think no, it does. No. Is that no. the bribe, do you think? That the, the free bus service didn't oh, come so to I'm the I'm northern I'm going to trip down the goal. Mm. Yeah, I think that, um I think okay. that's quite there's lots of activities going on yeah. individually. I mean, I could be very facetious here and say, I think this is going to be the new Christmas parades. Um, so we give them 2,500. Um, I never throw them at the cash months. Um, I can see that Matthew is going to be that type of thing. Brazilian. Um, hopefully, Santa Claus won't be phased out. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, it looks like the parades are, and so maybe this is going to take over. Although they're going to have the same issues with it, it's not talking about parades somewhere. As far as traffic management and anything else, they put it just in. So, I said I'm not in favour of increasing the amount. We gave them 5,000 last to our meeting and discuss it extensively then. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Dave. <coughs> Feedback has, has come to us that maybe we hadn't been diligent enough at reading the, the, the previous application, but for me that wasn't the case at all. I think that the, what I look is where the money has gone. Yeah. And so I, what concerned me, and I raised the questions with um, Jackie and, and uh, yeah. earlier around the money going out of that area. Um, I also know that 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 uh, the production is also that that a person who owns it is actually listed as one of the moving also or the, one of the organising committee or something. So that can be quite critical for it. I really think that it's great to support our new events. So this is this is really you know really awesome. But it's a little bit problematic that I, that I'm going to see the impact on our community. And you talked about the buses, but it's typically buses leave from a pub, and so people are going to gather at a pub and probably preload and go to an event. Oh, I, I think you're making assumptions here, Dave. Yeah, I, I, not information here, so when there's not information, we need to discuss possible implications of that. You already know in, in play here that there's a number of social issues that are going on in the township. Yeah, that have been related. So, so I, I, I would have liked to have seen a wider spread of events come up from this rather than just one big event. And I, I feel uncomfortable that we're, we're in terms of the cost, the cost of going to event organisers through funding streams are going to event 
projector and a bed. Organize or something in, in those. Um, I can I can comment on that. Um, one of the reasons Northland Inc funded them was because they um, had the high profile qualified events people behind it and it was highly likely to succeed. That I do know that. So I think, you know, if you're going to run a really good, expensive, successful event that people are going to return annually and you've got to get that inaugural event off the ground and, and stage it and make it the place to want to come for Matariki every year, that you've got to do it professionally and you've got to do it well. And that's why they've had the support and the funding and the external funding that they have um, obtained for that very reason, that they've put together a really good professional application. That sounds great. So it sounds like the funding's already sorted out. A lot of the funding that's already, it's always already, yes, no, no, I'm sorry, I, I'll, I'll give you the wait. No, 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 it's a, a lot of the funding is already tagged. They've had to, to, I mean, the event's only several weeks away, three weeks, 23 days away, 22 days away. They've had to get stuck in and, and market the event and plan it. Um, I'm quite keen to support the toilet uh, hardware fire folks here under 11. What page are you on? I am on page 12 of the supporting information. Okay. Yeah. So there's uh, 4,000 volunteers. Are you foreshadowing an amendment here? Uh, I just wanted to highlight the things that I like about this. We're kind of talking about things we are aware of. And so I just want to say that those costs are total $11,000. Um, I'm affectionate towards the uh, and waste folks and the travel. The other expenses are not, but the, those ones that I know are going to help with hosting people, I know that they get there with the things that they can post and to support. I think Bruce is absolutely right. We need to look at something that we go towards the front of our applications in the same way that we do acceptance fees. Otherwise, we'll see a whole truck load of these things we won't be able to support. So I think we do need to do something like the Next year, the 2,500 we apply to the constituency and the parades and things. I think we need to get a bit of that for next year. But for this year, I believe this is our only Matariki celebration event. I don't know if that's the fact of what I've seen, it's the only one in our area that's going to be. Catherine's nodding. And, um, and there's an opportunity here to support. Collaboration, which I kind of haven't seen before with this group of people yeah. with the community. Yeah, there's a deeper level here. And I don't know why that's happening. Maybe that's post COVID, maybe that's people are feeling like they want to get involved more with yeah. the celebration of us. But you don't usually see that group of people together. Mm. I quite like that. And, you know, but I think our tower at meetings, I think we had our meetings out to the community. So it was nice to see Barn open up today. Mm. I don't think, um, I thought it was good that they raised the concern around the fireworks because lastly we want to be mm. <laughs> uh, We want to see such a something really great. Um, but I, there is a, it does seem to have been a little bit of a rush of putting the things together. At least that's what I'm through. But in terms of supporting any of the financial expenses, those are the ones that I would be keen to support. So have you put an amendment together? Well, as I fucked up, it actually comes to 21407 and they've already, so asking for 15000 that's 21000 Yes, okay. Thank you. So I, I thought we'd just go with the 15000 <laughs> um, We can tag it. Yes. Okay, we can tag it. That's yeah. where I'm sitting. Manuela. No, that's no? Yep. You're happy with that? So you want to tag, can we just finish with Manawai? So you'd like to tag that towards um, Whatever we give the, towards, those, towards uh, the portal loads? Yeah, the, that contribution to the toilet. I calculated $21,407. So that's 15,000 that they asked for. Put a low marquee fencing, waste, and 
Did I miss transport? Transport. Thank Excuse you, me, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. The money we allocated to them last month mm -hmm. does that stay with them, or is, is this a brand new? This is this is a fresh application. So, so they get twenty or less. Yeah. So that will cover just about all of that. We're generous, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> I moved Manawai seconded it with the proviso that the fifteen thousand is tagged towards the Portaloo marquee fencing, waste and transport. Yep. We paid from the Fernity Grant Fund account to Business Pay here Inc for costs towards the inaugural Matariki Festival twenty twenty two. I'm going to put that to the vote. Oh, sorry, you want to comment again? Yeah, well, I've done a similar list to mine um, right about that. So I, so I had different things um, tagged. So I had yeah, two parts, sorry, four grand, nine K for the buses, toilet, four K, and fencing, 2.5 K. Similar. $20,000 that I was going to, with that I was to rescind the previous 5,000 and to approve the 20,000 tag for those things. Enough, but I just the Excuse me, but we'll just have to find out if that money's been uplifted because we can't rescind it hasn't, but not yet. I'd be happy to vote for that. Yeah, just, just with the proviso, the 9K seemed to be a, a give or take as to what happens with the buses, part of the reporting. So that was, so we're taking the money. If, if, Half the buses were used and it wasn't the full amount, then we would then, then we wouldn't be able to be spent it to be with them. That's the yeah, so the other stuff is around event management to make it have you put in communities. Okay, so have you put an amendment? Well that that's I mean we're we're trying to target the let's not make amendment. it in committee like we did last month. No, let's, let, let's put an amendment or not put an amendment. Oh, well, well, we have a we have a motion we have an amendment already on the table. We're talking about rescinding the original grant and making a. No, we're not. This has just been suggested. Yeah. You want to speak to that? Well, no, really, what we're saying, aren't we, that we want to give them another 15,000. But that the entire 20,000 grant would be applied to the following uses. So I don't think we need to rescind the one, rescind one then agree to grant the whole 20,000 subject to conditions. We, we agree to grant a further 15,000 on yep. the condition that the entire 20,000 granted is applied to the following. Which conditions. is what we've got on the table. It's Shall I reread it? Um, with what Frank's just worded, it would be on the condition that the full 20,000 be used. Well, that was a previous application, so. Is it that the entire 20,000 granted by the board to this event be affirmed? Can we do that? We already granted that last at, month. At the moment, the motion on the table is to fund $15,000 mm. for these specific things. Yes. Um, if you were looking at. You're looking to tag last month's funding that we've already granted them. So I think if it's just put so towards. We're giving them an extra 15,000. But we want to make sure that the entire 20,000 is used for certain purposes. <clears throat> I don't see that that's difficult. Well, it's two, It's last month's application. They're two separate applications. They're taken on the merit on the day. So what, we, what we've got here covers it. Um, so Dave mentioned security, which isn't in this one. Security? Was it yeah, two 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 part or quote? You want to add security? Was that the request was for security? Yeah, security, buses, toilets, and fencing. But that overall, that all of that added up to twenty. So if you're only allocating Entry. fifteen, fifteen, um, then you would need to take. But they could just cut allocate. I think just money. a point of clarification, Dave, is that it, we can request that it be put toward those things. If it's less or more, that's their shortfall. Or, you know, it's it's you're specifying things they might spend. Half on the portaloo, half on the transport, a quarter. It's up to them how they apportion it. What we're saying is this is what we would like it spent on. That's fine so long as the reporting back comes back and says that that's how the money was split. Yep. If it's allocated across yes. the we're yep. only going by the quotes that have been provided Correct. for those, yep. um, for yep. those particular issues. 
like that. What do you mean I'm getting my 20 grand? You might like to resend that one. I'm not a member of Business Pie here. I'm not involved in the festival at all. I'm putting the motion that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board approves a sum of $15,000 plus GST if applicable is tagged towards the Porter, oh, Porter Lose, Marquee Fencing, Transport and Security be paid from to be paid from the board's community grant fund account to Business Pie here in Colbrady for cost towards inaugural Matariki Festival 2022. That's two E's on there. And the Northland waste um, fencing waste. I've got it. No, we missed waste out, Mana. Why we changed it? Put waste fencing waste. Fencing waste of course. Waste transport security. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, Matariki it out. I'm going to put it to the vote. All those in favour, raise your hand. Against? Would you? Carried. Would you like that recorded? Yeah. Right. Yes. Can you Ah, <laughs> <laughs> how could we resist that phase? <clears throat> yes. OK, let's go down to Kitty Kitty Business Association. And the patient, Sarah. I think it was the bottom one. Right, so we have this recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board approves a sum of $7,458 plus GST if applicable, be paid from the board's community fund account to Kitty Kitty Business Association for costs towards Main Street irrigation replacement. Do I have a mover? Bain? Seconder, Manuela? Mm -hmm. We're going to have a robust discussion around... <laughs> The hanging baskets and the irrigation. No, no questions, no comments. No, no interest. I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour, raise your hand. Against. That carried unanimously. I. Sorry. All that, long, yeah. that was painless, wasn't it, after sitting here all day? <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. You were here for how many hours? I'm putting an hourly rate on. You're volunteer hours. Not as much as Nola's done. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, yeah, she's a toiler. I hope you enjoyed hanging with us. See you again, I'm sure. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Deputation? Do we want to take any deputation? We did give her one. And do you want us to jump to you, seeing as there's nobody else waiting? Are you happy sitting there for a minute? No? We can move to your item. Okay, perfect. Right, so we're moving on now to uh, moving back, I should say, dot bottom. Seem to be turning pages backwards and forwards today. Yes. Oh, I still got the D, E, F, and I, and H. Business pie here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other steps? Oh, come on. Right, so we're moving to F, Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board. I will move that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board approve the sum of $5,000 plus GST if applicable, be paid from the board's community grant, community fund account, getting tongue tied, to Far North Land Search and Rescue for cost towards club venue lease. Do I have a seconder? Lane, thank you. Yes. This 
as far as I'm aware, council still subsidises Coast Guard at the end. And Not aware of that. Yeah, they, they council given money to them. Yeah, and so there's there's funding there from the council. I, I I'm I'm quite happy to obviously close this and second and vote for it. But we need to be consistent. If council subsidising one lot of people, they should be subsidising all. That would be my only comment. Okay. Are they subsidising Coast Guard and Search and Rescue or just Coast Guard? Oh, yes. Okay. But they actually do it through oh. Farm Old Holland. That's it goes right. way yes. back to when, far, when the airport was taken over by Farm. It's a direct subsidy. Mm -hmm. Frank. The, the building that they're currently in is owned by Farm Old Holland. Yep. Which is owned by Canada. And I don't think anyone is not 100% supportive of what Search and Rescue does. It seems to me crazy that Search and Rescue is to come and get money off us as a community board to be able to pay the rent to a company that was owned by our council. It just seems we're going around a bit in circles. Surely common sense can prevail and a deal can be done between Farm North Holdings Council and Search and Rescue to ensure they have an appropriate facility. So just in response to that, Raywin did say that um, that they had had discussions with Farm North Holdings and that they had indicated that they would look at a reduced rent for them, but until such time as they're given notice, they're happy to work with them and they're aware of the situation. Yeah, but we're being asked to make a grant of funds in yes. advance of any deal that might possibly be done. Well, you can put an amendment that if they get if they get rent relief that they don't need the money. But we did have a discussion earlier this morning and questions were asked by other members um, around the cost of their equipment and all sorts of other things I, that I, they could. I understand all of that. I'm just pointing out it does seem to me to be a bit silly, hmm. given, given who owns who and, and what, that, that this is hmm. really an issue. It's an unfortunate situation they're in, definitely. Yeah. Manuela? Yeah, and I would like to make a point that it's very arrogant for finals holdings, um, just going saying, oh, yeah, we, we will come to the table when such time comes. They know that these volunteers are stressing over something that, um, like their rent, because they do not know what's going to happen. I'm sure finals holdings will come now to the table and say, look, we look after you. Please don't stress, concentrate on what you're doing as a volunteer. Very arrogant of finals holdings. That's all I'm saying. It's a shame we have to support volunteering things like that. If the money, they didn't pay more, that money came back to us. Does that come back into our kitty or is it we're allocating it from this financial year? Yes, it will still come back in. It will just come back into the next financial year. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, any more discussion around this? Can you put a recommendation they do to run a go show? Time is holding. Give me an amendment if that's what you want to put up. No, they're going to have to lift it for rent. If they, if they don't end up paying rent, they're going to lift it. Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. We pursue the kind of holding. Well, they will. They, that's what they do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They don't want to pay They're basically going to all three community boards to cover their rent to know that they've got somewhere secure should they be given notice within a month, basically, is what, what they're doing. Oh. Yeah. When you put that in for the next, then it becomes an issue of regional importance, not um, board important. District wide. Yep. So, therefore, I don't, I don't I want to be supported. So it could be a council funded. Okay, that's interesting. Right. They, they went to all three boards. Uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, Catherine, because their volunteers came from within those areas and they also service those areas. Yeah. 
um, I've already discussed it with Rose she will try to get the same people um, just as mm. cases so they can be different this stuff. Yeah, it does say that in the application. They didn't have the lead in time. Yeah. <laughs> right, so we're moving on with the recommendation. Right, I put it to the vote. I move, lay new second. All those in support? Raise your hand. Against? Dave, do you want it noted? Thank you. Four thousand dollars left. Whoa. Where shall we go to for dinner? Okay, so we've done that, we've done that. So we have um we haven't dealt with D. That's why we have to fill that link. Yeah. So, so the Bay of Islands Community Centre Association withdrew the application. We did not have a speaker to the Kiriki Rifle and Pistol Club. They are coming to July, so um, we can cross I off, that's transferred to next year, uh, next month, which will be next year financially. So we are down to the van and Bay of Islands Animal Rescue. The, the van, they were hoping to get, the gym club were hoping to get that up and running for Term two. I don't have school kids, but it says here June, which is this one. So whether that is going to have an impact on their funds or their ability to fundraise. Um, They are working. Yes, Manuela. Um, just put it all in perspective what we've done today. Yes. Um, we funded 20 grand to a one day event. Yes. We're looking at 20 grand to D6 some pets, which will go. A long, long way, and looking at funding a van that will last another 20 years for a group that does things mm. for all, maybe all kids and adults. Um, just to put that in perspective, and you can think about that. All the diversity of things we Brief, get and yeah. we need to look at, and people could be disappointed of not getting anything. It's very hard to compare. Uh, you can't and compare it. You That's can't. What I struggle with. Yes, you can't. I mean, I, I, you would have all received. I asked for an update on the um, Bay of Islands Animal Rescue, and yeah. their application on um, page sixty-eight uh, said that they got money from us for Bark in the Park. They weren't sure how much, so um, I requested how much. We've actually given them twenty-seven thousand two hundred and ninety-one. Um, since September 2019, between then and over two years, basically, uh, which is a considerable amount of money too when you add it all together. And we haven't had that discussion around dog um, registration fees and, and where that money goes to and how much we should be paying for this ongoing service. That's right. That's so, right. which they do a fantastic job within the community. Uh, whether we... I'm happy to, to discuss whichever first, whichever application you would like to Could discuss. I foreshadow something about the four thousand dollars we have, or yes. it's just an idea to throw it there. And I mean, that's the two options we have, right? It's the moment with the van and animals. 
and and I really like how Sam talked <laughs> today about how they're looking at it in a holistic approach because it's a big issue. Mm. It's a massive issue, even if you don't have a pet, mm. you know. And, and pets are contribute massively to our well-being. I, I lost a dog a year ago, and I'm still suffering, mm. so mm. it's not a nice thing. And it's, it's the holistic approach that really because me the first that she she came and talked to us several times and this today is the first time I thought they're doing it the right way they from all angles they're going to schools because that's through kids you reach the adults and they they trying to get rid of the virus vaccinate 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 they they're doing an amazing job mm -hmm. in, in all angles and some people might say it's only animals but it's animals and maybe we could put the money we got left over towards the educational program that the Bay of Islands, what well, they called animal rescue stuff. It's just an idea, but something to think about it because I do really appreciate what they do and how they how they do it. I think yeah, we all we all do appreciate. Yeah. I think every every time they come to us for funds, yeah. people are looking at that. How I'd like to know how much money FNDC puts towards these things. The um, dog registration funds, you know, I I don't know how the dynamics are like that. And going to our communities and, and finding yes. out, but like you know, Bruce, you pulled the analogy of the Christmas parades. You know, are the communities yeah. happy to fund dissecting dogs every year, year in, year out, ongoing? It's the same thing. Where there's certain things that we seem happy for community good and feel good to continue funding. Like we're a soft touch and it is emotive. You know, we all have pets. You know, I put one down at Christmas, but at the end of the day, it's not about that. It's about rate pay a dollar and where we put yeah. it and the responsibility of council and the, the dog yeah. ownership and the fees and the big picture. So, yeah. To the chair, where does the money registration go? To the pound, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, you'd it, hope it, so. It, 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 it's a big issue. From what I can understand, one of the issues dog owners is we pay dog registration fees. Where does it get spent? Is it always spent on pounds and animal inspectors? Blah blah blah. I don't know the answer to that. Someone must know. I don't think we really want to look at how much has been spent on pounds and dogs over the last few years because it might horrify you. <laughs> from somebody that doesn't have a dog, used to, doesn't, it would not be unreasonable to expect that money that people pay to register their dog should cover the cost of dog desexing, vaccination, bloody or animal, animal control at animal least. Control, all of those mm. things that are mm. to do with dogs, and I suppose cats, if you don't register. So that they should almost be self-funded. So whatever you pay to register a dog, that should be at a level that provides a little service. I just wanted to add that, you know, by choosing between the two, that I've been more keen for the money that we have need to go for um, our dog program, program things like that, um, Manuela said, because I'd actually like to give more. Uh, I'd like to push out and give more towards the um, domestic stuff with me. Pre COVID would have not been keen to fund But post COVID, not saying that people will say understanding the level of working poor that live here in Kitty Kitty that might be using that Kakapa. Yeah. I think that's something we've got to consider now for our two years of COVID. And that sounded like they tried a whole lot of things. They tried to get a school, they tried to get other groups, they fought their own van for this sort of thing. And they really done gone above and beyond. Mm. And that's just I think what they're seeing is that working for essentially based on all of the effort they're putting in trying to organise transport. So, so you're happy to let that lie on the table until our next meeting? To, give, to be able to give us an opportunity to more than 4,000. Okay, Manawai. So we have a, if you're wanting to speak to the gymnastic club, we do have a recommendation here that I can put, if that's the desire, Frank. No, I want to speak to the dog one. No, we'll, we'll deal with the van first. No, that's fine. Van? Sorry, I thought we were still on. No, we've gone to the van. Sorry, van? that was just a
I mean, I, I just blanketly support gymnastics because I've watched them fight mm. for the last 20 years. Um, and I, I and it's just like I, I it's the wife of the Australian and they have gone above and beyond and they get little support from uh, sports more, but it's kind of not the in thing. It's not rugby, it's not league, it's not yeah. football. Um, and they don't get that support. And they're quite right. They didn't get the support of the high school because it wasn't seen as a high school style sport. It didn't sure. take place. Yeah. So they have fought and fought and fought and to get a location. And I just think that the number of kids they put and, and how they do it without a facility, and I, I'm not using this as a bad example, but we have the, the bowling club kids which has, if you go through the number of active members of the bowling club and you spend on the bowling mm -hmm. club, uh, and then you look at this gymnastics group, the number of kids that they managed to put through a week, it, it, you go, well, why, why am I funding one and not the other? So I wholly in support of their band. Okay. So, Dave. So, I D and H. We're dealing with H. We're dealing with H. If you just let me speak and I'll explain my point. We did. We're not talking D and H, we're talking about H. Okay, okay. so this one talks about to be considered the next financial year, but we're talking about two different funding applications. We are. Which are considering whether we give money to dogs or to vans. So actually, yeah, well. Manu, why was speaking to the van? We can't speak to them both at the same time. Well, if we're going to, I'm well, going to put a recommendation to the van. Well, I'm going to recommend that we leave this one to lie on the table. I'm going to recommend that we leave the other that is one the to lie on the table because it's not a sentiment that focused. But I'm going to recommend that we move on to actually the Bay of Islands, the, the, the community centre one with the 4,000. That, that was withdrawn. Or she wasn't going to come to speak to It has been withdrawn. The application has been withdrawn. Well, I strongly recommend that both these ones should go on the table. We're not going to do them justice but unless we agree to consider a part payment and to reconsider the application in the new yeah. financial year. Can I ask what resolution is currently on? She's trying to get a. The chair's trying right. to get a resolution, and well, we must have had a resolution to start the discussion. No, no, no. because I, I spoke. We had the two remaining. Was something to extra on top of what's here. The four thousand dollars we got left. Right. Which started the debate. Of the, of the twenty thousand they want for the dissecting program. That's what I was sorry I okay. wasn't clear enough. Okay. Okay. Well then it seems to me a way around this is that we have the resolution H um, and we, we're looking to resolve with that application for twenty five thousand remain on the table to the Yes, Frank. Would you like to move it? Yes, I'm yes. trying to. <laughs> yes, Frank is mover. Thanks, Manawai. Right. Second of Manuela. On Spongebob Community Board tables the request for the sum of $25,000 plus GST for applicable from the Board's Community Fund account to the Bay of Islands Gymnastics Club for costs towards the community van to be considered in the new financial year. Moved. Manawai seconded. Manuela. All those in favour, raise your hand. Okay, carried against. Carried. Right, now I will put the recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board tables the request for the sum of $21,000 plus GST if applicable from the Board's Community Fund account to the Bay of Islands Animal Rescue for cost towards animal desexing to be considered in the new financial year. Do I have a seconder for that? And discussion? Can I move an amendment? Yes. Please. I would like to move an amendment that we approve 4,000 of the request for 21,000 and leave the balance to be um, dealt with at our next meeting. <coughs> and then we don't <coughs> lose that four grand. It's going to them. And yes. Do I have a second that? Yep. Thank you, Lane. <laughs> Thank you, Lane. That was painful, wasn't it? 
So I'm now going to put the amendment. Oh, the Bay of Islands Whangarei Community Club approves the sum of four thousand dollars plus GST if applicable, be paid to the Boys Community Grant Fund to the Bay of Islands Animal Rescue for costs towards animal desexing. But then, we uh, beg about the remaining seventeen. Catherine, will I have to reapply, or can we resubmit the application on their behalf? Straight. Yeah. Yeah, they all know. Right. Okay. Do we vote on that? Right. Move, Frank. Yeah. Second in line, four thousand dollars. All those in favour? Against carried. Um, the substantive isn't voted on. Oh, okay. So we weren't happy to just add that. Okay, so oh, we made well, it an amendment. If Belinda and Dave were happy with. Uh, yeah. Hang on. Let's just find it again. Okay. So I'm happy. With the amendment, if you are, Dave, for four thousand dollars, that becomes a substantive motion. Yep. And then all those in favour? Against? Carried. Right. Is that all right? Yep. Complicated. Okay, item one one eight. Item 7.5, page 118, that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board commits $85,000 from its placemaking fund for 2021 to 2022 to detailed design work at the Strand Russell. Remover? Yes. <laughs> no surprise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Would anyone like to second that, please? Yeah, I'll go. Thank you. You've read the report? Any discussion? I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Raise your hand. Against? Carry. Thanks, Pete. Save me 85,000 on the event. I couldn't have them. I just blinked at them. I think that's fear. Guess what? We all did, I think. Yeah. That's a lot of money, isn't it? You're dealing with coastal, aren't you? Item 7.6, that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board note the project report received from the Bay of Islands Community Centre. Do we have a mover? Frank? Seconder? Yep. Bruce? I just wanted to, yeah, comment. Could I ask if this um, report came in because they applied? Yep, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, that's all I needed to know. Thank you. Okay, and we've already discussed in our pre-meeting around the deadlines of. Um, I know the bank statements didn't actually show; they only showed two years. Didn't show when the money was uplifted, so we should have actually had a report probably two years ago on that one. And interestingly enough, there was actually no. Um, There was, there was no information given on the findings of it either. So anyway, we'll move on. All those in favour? Against? Okay. Carried? Right. Item 8.1. Ann, update on the Kitty Kitty White Paper Spatial Plan. I'll put the recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board receive the report update on Kiriki White Paper Spatial Plan. Do have a seconder? Lane. Roger, are you, is someone going to speak to this? No? Just. Just Um, typos. I didn't pick up the typo. That's not like me. Really. <laughs> I'll start looking. Yeah, um, 
So if I'm just saying sort of what we are, which is the special planning project, um, then just kind of wind up. Yeah, um, last year we workshop with that uh, club, you know, uh, we did the squad and the six three. Challenging thing for this um, dislocation is the bound is quite good with the start finish and what action is the um, nuance is the um, Are you making like a little action? And as we know, this one is going to be quite a good thing. Um, they didn't have a that's for a word, but you know, yeah, the two. Um, away from the um, mostly in the project that um, they um, <laughs> and have some like, um, I could go on for ages on this thing, but um, that's just a quick update that's more in progress right now. Um, Side of the top. Um, so they um, um, that is looking at is um, uh, what, um, what sort of type of housing is to play. Um, and just going in and then we've got a residential neighborhood. So um, is there is it uh, so actually saying this is this is gonna be a flow zone thing. Um and then uh, this um what they're actually a uh, market. So so we can probably find Um, and um, there's a one by one test and also also a statement of this. But it's basically looking at the does the place work to build the um, statement of this chain and grab it and um So that's the two days of it. And then, um, that's that looks good. Um, it's very good. So, sorry. A bit of a little 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 bit of a 
the uh, the impulse limit. Um, and I could just use the data for it. Is on Thanks, Roger. It's a lot of stuff, a lot of, lot of, <coughs> lot going on. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions for Roger while he's here? How about other things, though? Hello. Yes. I'm <laughs> young. <laughs> Love this. Go. Fine. You look at the, the actual earnings of the the, the average earnings for the territory for this uh, in bond. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, last screen camera there. Sorry. Um, yeah, the, so the, um, the piece of learning study is exactly that. It's a it's um, white housing topology type of housing, um, and this plan is going to enable um, a density addition. And the government is also pushing for implementation through some regional, some recent policy statements. So um, the feasibility study, I was right. That's the district plan is from built eight meters, have a two or three story apartment. So uh, so the question is, does it have the uptake for that sort of market for it? So what sort of people do we need to build? With? Definitely the case of the possibility um, that housing prices are, are high and building costs are high, so there's no effect on the possibility of the possibility that you know, what's available to take it up. So it's quite a, it'll be interesting study. I'm not going to preempt anything, but the study runs for definitely looking at it. Before we have to say that even the choice of housing to developers have been taken as far as doing it. It's purely looking at um, what's um, what, up the yeah, what the market uptake would be, okay. what's been enabled into the district plan. So the district plan is just you know, definitely not for it. It's going to enable a little bit. It's about, it, you know, the district plan just has to enable that. It's who actually takes it up, um, the way of developing it. And then where's the gap? We anticipate that there's a big gap here of affordability, which will highlight um, the need for a uh, Another four hundred thousand. Because we're we're there. Outside the yeah. of development. Yeah. This this town is there. Yeah. We're the only building. Very little happening. Yeah. And trying to get a shop extension out of social. So for anyone coming in, something that we've done to get rid of the It's just it's. It's the whole district, though, right? Yeah. Problem anywhere. I'm being parochial. No, no, no. Well, um, the kind of order nationally um, told us is to make. You're live streamed. And listen, um, as, um, <laughs> even if you have a uh, land of zero cost, you can play up in <sighs> Bigger problem with that. It's. Well, that would be why a lot of my and many of the Oh, right. There's a gap situation. Yeah. Yep. All of the district. Okay, thanks, Roger. So, when can we expect to see some outcomes? September? Uh, yeah, so we, we're, we're heading towards September. Um, what we are doing is we're sharing early drafts of what we're doing with um, government agencies, so we've got a big couple of June, um, which is what we've done the final round um, of Ministry of Urban Housing Development. Um, well, we only need the DHB on this, um, it's a big deal. So, uh, it doesn't focus. Uh, included, um, and what was proposed is today, and I'll Morning, and I'm overwhelmed. Okay, 
so we can expect something. Yeah, it's strat we're, strategy we're, and policy. And what we're, we're absolutely committed to getting something up in September. Uh, the only question will be how much have we did along the studies that we need to come back for a week. Um, but I'll just remind you that, that that's a discussion document to go out for public consultation. That's followed up by a draft spatial plan, um, which is also the um, special consultation procedure, as it was described in the That process is taking this one out for people. So this is all public consultation with experts. Um, and then the second one is so it's a two step process. And um, by, that, by the time that one comes, Great, okay. Look forward to seeing something in a few months' time. Thanks, Roger. Thanks for that update. Right, so I move that report, Lane seconded it. All those in favour? Raise your hand. Against? Carried. We'll move on to 8.2, Cherry Park House. At the Bay of Alice Bungara Community Board received the report Cherry Park House update. Do I have a mover? Frank Bruce second. Frank moved. Any discussion around this? Frank, did you want to raise any points in here? No, not really. Okay. Um, the committee has considered this report, but we haven't formally met, but I made it available to them. Uh, there is general happiness with the report. Um, we are having debates about which of the three options we might prefer. Um, I have been pushing for the um, closing of Cherry Park House and a new facility. Um, board, the board, the city uh, is in favour of that. The only concern they have is they don't want a case of let's close Cherry Park House and now let's think about what we might do in place of. And I've made it very clear to them that as far as I'm personally concerned, they can stay in Cherry Park House subject to ensuring we've got the health and safety issues under control as till such time as we have come up with a replacement. And um, there is some money available in terms of placement funding for Cherry Park House over the next three financial years. That's around about $500,000. I'm asking what seems to me to be a simple question, but I'm an accountant, which means I know nothing about local government accounting. Um, it's quite a different base to. <laughs> I would like to see if we can't use that 500000 of replacement money as a contribution to the replacement of Jerry Parker's I know there's all sorts of issues in that, but um, yeah. the report is good. The committee is supportive of it, and we're, we're starting to make some progress. Right, yeah. And that funding is split. I see there's only 130 in 2024 and the other 355 mm -hmm. odd is 27. Yes, out quite a bit. But at least it's there and the work's being done. So that's great. Thank you. Anyone have any queries for Frank over that report? No. Right, put Good it to job. the vote. Good job. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Now we move on to item 8.3, Bay of Island Sports Complex, Pro Pro Complex Project Update. I'll move that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board received the report, Bay of Island Sports Complex Project Update. Do I have a seconder? Lane, thank you. Anne, are you going to talk us through this? Exciting baby. And Coleman, team football, and uh, Texted me and she said she's uh, watching. 
equals a plus a constant. Here is a logic that brings me through on the conditions that we have. There's a lot of things. We've learned that uh, soil suitability be a gradient to both. Helps in the whole Examine the soil and make sure we can head up. Grade, stamp, and then grains. Right, that will go and try to accessible for uh, particularly our children from schools that are likely on the activity. We looked at so many things. Yeah, sure. And when they go on the site that we've got, we bought that a couple of years ago, it's a good about 45 years. A small group. Right from the number of many ones driven down state highway. Can you read that we will see where the State Highway has been widened, drainage is um, not on camera at the moment, but we'll have a camera. So I'm just going to read for you what we're doing here, and you probably all picked it up. Uh, we've got uh, the, the tip of the whole lot, but the whole shooting matches. It's really expensive, beyond the ability of the right player to fund. We've got a lot of work ahead of doing some fundraising. Stage one will see five multiple sports fields, four cricket pitches, changing and toilet facilities, parking for 360 cars, buses, and vans. Second stage, which will come funny, uh, we'll see the creation of a new club room for adults, a gymnast, gymnasium, standalone gymnasium, hockey pitch. We wish to acknowledge Dane Jones. Dane Jones enabled us to get this far, and our beauty park out here in the has been just amazing. Um, without them, we have an amazing committee that is both, and we meet regularly with council staff and our planning team. Thanks for the. Te Pua Waitanga means the home, belonging, fun. We came upon this um, just before Christmas. Uh, I go back a long way with the uh, this is sort of where it's labour of love um, and to try and get this established. And in the last three years, this has really sort of gained traction and uh, things have moved along. Establishment of a working group uh, representative of the codes, as Anne says, um, the project management team, council representatives, uh, and more recently, um, we've got on board GLG. Now, Global Relations Group specialised in strategic planning, governance, direction forward, etc. We paid a visit a few months ago, well, August last year, to Wellington to have a look at a few sports hubs down there to see how they were run, how they operated. They had a common denominator down there that they had worked collectively with GLG to progress their specific sports hubs forward. So we came back with the recommendation to council that maybe that might be a good idea for them to have somebody that was able to guide the working in the direction, the strategic direction of both. So Ross Hutchinson and um, the other guy's name. Anyway, they are on board uh, with GLG to um, facilitate and help with the direction of. We had a workshop with them just before Christmas. Uh, they put in place a document. Establishment document, which, as I said, is going through 
the ownership of the government's 10 year plan as far as budget's concerned. Transforming, if you like, a part of the working group or some of the work government's board that will then go forward and start running it. Corporate society status, possibly so that we can start applying for funding. As Anne was saying, we get past stage one, we definitely need significant funds to. It's going to make a massive difference to the community. It's going to be huge. It started off for me with football, when you know that. Um, and it's just evolved. And now football is just one very small cog, a big wheel. There's sports codes out there, such as gymnastics, standard gymnastics, um, rugby league, that have operated for years without a home. Their, their ability to grow as a code has been severely restricted by the fact that they have. <coughs> So the fact that this sports hub is being um, now being brought to fruition is just amazing for the community. It opens up a whole lot of different avenues for community groups, different sports codes. So as Anne says in a nutshell, that's where we're up to at the moment. The um, resource consent was granted last week. It's not that far away from moving in with them. Um, Earth movers and that sort of thing to start things underway. There is a sort of a cautious optimism that um, fields could be ready to be used by the beginning of the 2023 season, um, which is May next year. We'll see how that goes. But things are progressing really, really well. So I think that's everything I've got. And if I have any questions or I've got anything to. Yeah. We've got none left. <laughs> 30 cents. 30 cents. Yeah. Have we got yeah. 30 cents? Yeah. We will get more out there. Thank you. This is ultimately um, the furthest return top in the world, so we're well underway with the system. Blessing for the party in Wednesday, and this is the third one. Regional schools are the one. And the board is well aware that the little clubs are aware that we are looking at the same We can't have mums and dads, grandmothers, everybody they want to have a compliance cop. So this is the start of a whole new way of going to Not for the kids. For our um, disabled, who have a lot of time to quality, we've got green prescriptions about the way. Who's open space? Just planning for a dog assisted park. That, and we're stealing croquet from you. They're going to move out with us. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was sincerely hoping that we could. It had occurred to me they could go with it. That we have you thought of that? But you've designed with in your agenda there? Yep. No, no, well, where are we going to take closer? Sports conference. Through the sports conference. Yes. What are you going to do with your football area? Now? At this stage, that's a work in progress. Um, we don't know. We need to talk to Baseport. Um, Baseport has. Um, uh, various issues at the moment they need to work through themselves, possibly with the help of Sport North Council as well. Um, there is no, nothing set in concrete at the moment as to what's going to happen there with, with the facility. All right. Uh, they're Can I just say a suggestion that we take care with it. Take your all. Sherry Park. Everybody wins. Love to try, Frank, but they're under their leash. So I think that they've got an independent board with an independent mind. So <laughs> you're pitching to the wrong crowd. Good try. Um, <laughs> and not that the of course, takes away from the fact that we still need a local facility locally. So this is not intending to take away uh, in any way, shape, or form us local field that we need for the community. A sport uh, in the area around Smalltown. 
our ultimate ambition is that we become a stadium so we can host national events. That's exactly what I was going to say as well. The, the, the opportunity here is the Bay of Islands is a destination. People come here on holiday, they come here all the time. And yet all of our sports codes that operate out of Kirikiri or this area, when we're playing competition, have to travel. Gymnastics has to travel to Pangare. Football has to travel to Auckland, Pangare or further. Everybody has to travel. We've got the opportunity now to bring those tournaments, those festivals, those people into this area, into Kirikiri. Not only helps the sports hub, but helps the entire economy. So the potential for the area. I haven't got the infrastructure for it. Not the sports infrastructure, the rest of the infrastructure. That's what I'm worried about. It's a great idea to you know, have sport and everything and bring more people, but we haven't got the infrastructure for it. We don't. You know, it's not have to go with you, but it's just an overall thing. We don't, we haven't got the roads, we haven't got the toilets, and we haven't got nothing. Parking, nothing. Oh, it's not there. Well, yeah, at the sports ground, we do the park when they go sleeping. Uh, anyway, sleep the it's great. Sports awesome. <laughs> we have a dream. We'll worry that's about good. how we get there. Good. We have a dream. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> good on you. <laughs> okay. It's just a question. Are any of those fields going to be sent here? So I second. Are any of those fields going to be sand pit? Yes, two of them are sand based. Cool. Yep. So uh, the, the, the drainage on those will. So the, yeah, the, the lifespan of those. I mean, we had a long conversation as, around. Um, I mean, sand based fields are significantly more expensive to put in, yep. but then the long term um, use of them um, cuts down on the, the maintenance cost that will be required on them. Um, so two of those will be sand based, which will be used for a uh, senior football competition. And then there will be three stroke four soil based meals. Yeah, very good. It's, it's the usage per week of a sand based field mm -hmm. that you can get X number of them in the fields up there. Yes. Papa, you're lucky to get six, six, seven hours a week, maybe. Yeah. Um, and on a wet day, increase it. Sand pits, you can get 12, 15, 16. 16, 16 hours. Hey, look, on. it's a long time since I did. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, that just means that you need to have less fields, and it justifies putting in lighting and all sorts of things. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, that's right. And we've got that was great, Danny. <laughs> Why, Papa? That was awesome. Great pronunciation. I'm going to come around and give you a high five later. <laughs> with the <Santa> title. <laughs> well, did I hear correctly that you'll be using the whole 41 hectares for the sports grounds? No, no, we're using 1250 in the middle. There's still a conversation to be had about what happens with the residual allotment. Uh, we have been approached by everyone, social housing <laughs> providers, to <coughs> developers, to people who want this ultimate all singing, all dancing sport and recreation of 42 hectares. Ratepayers pay for this land. If you're the ratepayers that need information uh, for the residents, about what is better than the future of the allotment. We were just really careful all the way through the process that no decisions have been made, no decisions will be made with our public consultation. The conversations have been had, we, we, we're very conscious of the fact that we need to get what we need here at the sports hub. We have the potential here to um, create a future proof what we need further down the track. We don't want to put into the sports hub now what we think we need and find five years time that we actually need in another two or three decades. Mm. If we can get into the plan now what we need, then there is the potential there to, to utilise some of the land that we've got. And then as, as Anne said, the right has uh, the open community can decide what is done with that. It is in the front though. So it's Frank, and you mentioned dog park. <laughs> um, how how um, how well advanced are we in terms of dog park? Is it conceptual at the moment? Or? It's the latter, entirely conceptual. We've applied for an our resource consent, right. and we have a dedicated footprint on the site. Right. When we get to the that stage, we will be asking the people who own dogs and know about dogs. And it's um, 
to design it. Probably they'll have to fund it as well. We don't have the money for that. But um, I think there's an some. Um, I'm not sure if there is. As to uh, that being uh, personally, I'm very happy with it. Some people are saying it's in. <laughs> it it is part of it. It will not. It is not the only solution. Dogs are beloved feeding pets, so people who own dogs will need. I see. Oh, sorry, I've got a <coughs> connectivity all through our Gary Kiri walking environment, so people can see dogs on leash where it's on leash. They get to a dog park, they can take the dog off leash, let the dog do what the dog do. That's why we have to be very careful yeah. with the planning mm. because, because children playing sports and uh, mm. yeah. dogs off the leash yeah. just don't, don't it's, mix. It's, no, it's a bit more than what um, That's right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the, one of the major um, uh, things that have come forward from uh, discussions we've had that might be oh, really popular is actually a, a path around the entire circuit of the sports hub as a walking path um maybe dogs on leash as well for walking around that similar to what's on the the domain here um sports hubs that we've looked at down in wellington every single one of them have a path around the it's one of the most utilized things about the sports hub so it's it, the scope there for doing that sort of thing as well so that is in September as well as long term that sort of dog training thing. Awesome. So everybody start training because on opening day you have the uh, entire community board out there in your fraction. Madam and Chairman, I'm not going to be threatened to by the deputy board. It's just not a problem. <laughs> then we're like we're doing. Oh, you're like right. Leading by example. I think it's a solid example. <laughs> Thank thank you. Madam Chair, thank you very much for the board's time. We appreciate the opportunity to see how exciting we are. Thanks, and, and thanks for sitting all day listening to us. And James, thank you. And congratulations with the resource consent. That's yeah. that's a massive step. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put that uh, recommendation, that report. I move Lane second it. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Support what you said before. I think that's important. It's a great stream, but like, you know, taking on the infrastructure that we currently have. <laughs> so, you're not stupid. And I, I don't know if everyone noticed, but I noticed, buddy. So, it was a great white puff old view. That was awesome. Okay. You started a business out there. You could pick it I appreciate it. Hello, Elizabeth. Right. Time is not our friend today. Item 8.5, Par Road. A post construction audit report that we have been waiting on. We kindly have. Uh, 8.4. 8 8.4. What did I say? 8.5. Oh, that's wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Bay of Honest Fungera Community Board received the, the report, Par Road Post Construction Audit Report. Yes, please. Moved, Manuela. Have a seconder. Yes. Bruce, thank you. Okay. Any comments? Yes, please. Yes. Um, I know we've received a petition over that. Yes. I think we um, decided that when we received the decision, uh, the petition, I think we made the wrong decision to what we what, what we've got the report. We should have just passed it on to council and say this is a security problem or safety problem, not security safety problem. The council needs to deal with it because now we got a report that opened even more can of rooms and I hate to know how much it's more cost with looking at the pretty yeah. pictures that, that I was have. yeah that was as a request and acknowledgement to the community for the petition. I, I do know that. Yeah. I understand yeah. that but in the future, we probably need to mm. be more careful how much we bite off because, mm -hmm. like we have with all reports, the information reports, all we're going to do is to recommend to whatever the recommendations are and the side of our hand. Okay. All the money we spend on, frankly, from my point of view, nothing. Um, Plain air. 
we all agree that I have some strong feelings on this question. I tried to read the reports and our local panel on my glasses for some of the stuff we just made. But I'm not sure that I, at, at the end of the report, I'm not sure what the recommendation was. No. And I, I'm not a voting expert, nor am I an arborist, so I'll get out of both of those. So when somebody submits a report, I actually want a recommendation or either all or black or white or something. But I mean, this didn't tell me what it was. I mean, I don't know whether I should walk down the footpath or not. It wasn't, yeah, I think it, it, just in response to that, like yeah. each each reference did have recommendations in the comments and a lot of them were or were not accepted. Yeah. And that's not for us to debate. It, no. It's the experts have done it. The idea of getting this into our agenda was to make it a public I information I document. That, Gemma, I'm not trying yeah. to but should that. should the public start asking us questions, then yeah. then obviously it's going to cause an issue because we may not be in a position to to answer them other than what we've received in the report. So it's gone to council. It's come to us because we requested it, and so we are simply receiving this so that the um, the public can yeah. have information from yeah. our agenda. The, the big danger we have, what I can see, is this particular stretch of road and the footpath below it. If that starts to become an issue, we're going to have a whole heap of footpaths and roads above it that they're going to be exactly the same issue. Because, yeah, it, 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 the footpath, the road has been there, the footpath has been there, nothing ever happened. And I've got several roads and footpaths like that in my subdivision. People see these things, but where are we going to end up? You know, we have to realign all roads and all footpaths. So, yeah, thanks for the report. Madam Chairman, I assume this report is sent up to the uh, people that came to us. One should never assume, ma'am. We know that, don't we? Okay. It's in here for public information. We can note at the action point that it is forwarded to the I, think I can't remember who lodged the petition, but we, I'm sure we can look that up. There was a group of people, I'm sure we could dig out the yep. person or whatever, and they should get a copy in the same font size yeah. and the same form. Yes. Yeah. All confused. <laughs> right, we shall do that. I've noted that for the action point. Okay, any more discussion? I'll put that to the vote. Moved, well seconded. Bruce, all those in favour? Against? Frank, favour. Thank you. Right, item eight point five. Our favourite topic: the redwood trees. Recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangarei Community Board receive the report twenty twenty two Kirikiri Redwoods update, and note that an annual inspection will continue to be undertaken to assess the health and condition of the trees. I shall just move that to get it on the table. Second, and Manuela. Yeah. Can I have a yes. question? Because within the recommendation, it says an annual inspection. Yes. Then when I go over that to make the annual inspection, it's randomly coming down trees. It's one yeah. of the three options. Yeah, but, but the recommendation is only talking about mm. an annual inspection. Yep. I need. I would like clarification for that. Uh, I, I think that's on the yep. point. And I think we need to clarify in our resolution that an inspection does not mean having gone to But it must be automatic. Well, it should be without being said back to this board before that decision is made. And, and I, look, I accept that it is a decision for council and it might be an operation in the Acknowledge all of that. But I know the feeling of the local residents and a lot of the residents about this. They are upset. Um, the, for us to know in advance that we start going to start getting telephone and phone calls and emails, it's not good enough. Us not to be informed. And, and and I'm it, not arguing. No, that, and it, and it shouldn't be allowed to do it without our permission. Not the issue. The issue is keeping people informed so that we know and we don't end up thickets when we members of our community when something say, hey, You don't I know. Don't, you know that they've done this or they're going to do that. 
And it's not good. Um, Hilary Sumter was going to come to the public forum this morning to speak to the report. Who's Hilary Sumter? From the Kitty Kitty Retirement okay. Village. She has um, sent a comment um, which she has asked me to read out accompanying the report, which she was going to come to just put to us this morning, but she couldn't. She had a clash of appointments at the last minute. She has just noted, if possible, it would be appreciated if it could be noted that the report by the arborist doesn't indicate the risk posed by the trees that are rotten, nor make a recommendation for treatment. Kitty Kitty Retirement Village are still of the view that the risk posed by the trees is considerable and removal and replacement with native trees and citrus trees would be the best mitigation of the risk caused by the trees to the people and structures. <laughs> they are no longer fit for purpose. Many thanks, Hilary Sumter, Chief Executive of the Kitty Kitty Retirement Village. So yes. that's just to be noted, their comments. In fairness, we are told that we have to justify that the trees are safe and everything else. This person is saying the trees are not safe, they are not fit for purpose. Well, I'm sorry, give me your evidence. It's oh, not they, good enough. They do, they do have evidence. Have oh, you never received the reports? So the legal legal opinions? I'm have. sure you have. We have. But let's, Madam Chairman, as I stated before, that's, that's just, this is a commercial operation and they're discussing public policy. And they continue to submit items to us claiming the trees are unsafe. Mm. I mean, I would rather we sold them the trees and the reserve and they could be with them. We're not here to discuss this. This is just their comments to the Arborist Report. I don't Do know, we have I'm an not amendment? Sure how they get to make comments on the Arborist yep, Report. I agree. I agree. How, how does that happen? Public forum. You can come and talk to anything you like. Okay. Lane, did you have an amendment to put to that second part of the um, recommendation? Well, it, that an annual inspection does not include the eye. Without consultation. Yeah. Yeah. Annual inspection does not. No. Yeah. Well, we know from the report that we asked for the process. Okay, yeah. we got here. Actually, sorry. Annual does not include the fillage. Oh. And does not include the fillage. That's right. Yeah. It's not included. The fillage. Without um, person consultation, but is it yeah, it's, it's a community, you want community yeah. board consultation. I'll read yeah. it out, Lane. Remember that the Babel and Spongara Community Board received the report 2022 Kitty Kitty Redwoods update and note that an annual inspection will continue to be undertaken to assess the health and condition of the trees and does not include and that it does not. Yes, it's there, but the does not because... include felling without consultation you are to the community board with the community board, sorry. I would just say unnecessary, consultation. Necessary. Uh, you can do it. You can do an inspection. I mean, we, we take the comments from the one of the neighbours. They haven't felled any trees, so their reports seem to stand up. No one else can stand up without felling any. I just, I think it should just read uh, an annual inspection that does not necessarily call for the felling of any tree. What, what are you trying to achieve? What I'm trying to say is because there's another, if this other second we page the same, exists, right? the second page says that the annual inspection would fell trees. Yeah. Right? So what I'm trying to say is that the, the recommendation that we're actually voting on would say not felling the trees, but it says just the inspection. So you want to reword that? Do I want to take yeah, that? Okay. We just said in that it does not include felling the trees without consultation. Okay. Yeah, let's just put that trees. Put right, that, I, that. I think from our discussion prior to the meeting, the, the, the comment still fits to how often should this happen? As I said, you don't go and have a colonoscopy every year. Well, <laughs> <laughs> 
No, but uh, they say it annually, don't they? That's we asked. I, I think the, the, the police report is quite clear that there's nothing in, in danger of it. It's quite what Hillary wants to read or not read. Yeah. Hillary, that, that is not the case from the report. The, the annual inspection was requested by us to uh, carry uh, out a level so three not, assessment. So then why are we still requesting an annual inspection? No, we requested a level three inspection, not not anything else. Level three inspection, and that was ultrasound or what was that? Yeah, but it had to be it had to be annual from council's arborist report, didn't it? So one of the reports annual. We we got to an arborist report. It's not that we must do it. I personally remember moving that we not accept the report, we refer it back to the council and ask for the level three arborist. Yeah, that's what we do. The next yeah. thing we heard is six tree feet in the mm. And that's where the disconnect has come. Oh, to the amendment. Oh, the amendment. Okay, sorry. The amendment is that the board Somebody else three, on but right. on this point, we do annual inspection. Still waiting for a second. Yeah, the notable trees. They're not in the notable register, but, but we do notable said, trees. It is yeah. not well, that tree. There's quite a few notable well. trees. Are you sure you guys need us online? Don't make hmm? sense, doesn't it? Nina's online. Like so these trees are all... Nina Gobi's online if you want to ask Nina about the annual inspection, where the word annual came from. Is that the discussion at the moment? Okay. Oh. I don't know my um through the chair. Sorry, my voice. Hi, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know my I'm not too good today, and that's why I'm not there. <clears throat> my my throat's got how my voice is going. I guess at the end of the day, it's what what do you as a board want us to do to make you feel more secure in terms of being involved in an the decision with regards to these redwoods. And I know that's probably not what you want to hear, but from what happened, my understanding is, is that we were looking at doing annual inspections. Then that got changed to the last, the last report we received was that we could go to two yearly assessments. And then the next thing we were told to remove some of those redwood trees to have a look at them. And I suppose what we've done is provided you with the latest information and then saying, what do you want to do now? Thanks, Nina. Manuela. Well, <laughs> it's last time I the assessment. And that clearly didn't happen. And now we, we've got the option two as a carry out a level three assessment. So I'm not quite sure why we should put anything forward <laughs> that then just gets overruled. That's that's our dilemma. Maybe I'm missing something, but it's quite simple. If we have a resolution that we want recommendation that once a year mm -hmm. change. Yes. So in terms of, of what Nina is saying, what we want we want the trees looked at once a year to ensure there is no risk, but that that should not, where possible, in involve cutting down six trees. Did you hear that, Nina? So we have added note that an annual inspection will continue to be undertaken to assess the health and condition of the trees, and that it does not include felling the trees without consultation. Absolutely. Can I just um, ask then, do you want a level three assessment or do you want a level one, the level one being just that visual or do you want a level three with, with, with which was what we wanted to do originally? An inspection, level one, if the, if the level one finds something that's not right, then I, say, I assume you go on to something more detailed. Level one is looking at them, isn't it? Well, yeah. I don't know what the levels are. Nina, level look at... <laughs> Sorry, Chair. Level, level... Some options confused here in, in the report. 
Yeah, level one is just a visual assessment. Yes. Level three is the more serious one where they come up with the, the equipment and do like an X-ray through the trees and through the root systems. And that's what we originally were looking at doing before they were fouled. Yeah. Thanks, Nina. Seconder. So, we haven't asked for a level three this time. Recommendation is simply to note the annual inspection continues to be undertaken to assess the health and condition of the trees and that it does not include felling the trees without consultation. Lane's moved it. I'm lacking a seconder. Thank you, Frank. I'm going to put that to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Manawai, did you vote? Yep. Yeah. Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Some substantive. Thank you, everyone. Well, we start. All right, so uh, that amendment becomes a substantive motion. I move by lay and seconded by Frank. I'll put the substantive motion. Annual inspection will continue to be undertaken to assess the health and condition of the trees and that it does not include felling the trees without consultation. I have a mover. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. All those in favour? Against? Carry. We'll put the trees to bed for a while. Okay, item 8.6, our action sheet. We're getting there. Nearly on time. Move the recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board receive the report Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board Action Sheet Update June 2022. Do I have a seconder? Yes. Thank you, Manuela. I'm going to go through these one by one. Shall we? Okay. We got time. Mm. So it's, it's one question of if we're not going one by one. one, by one. Um, Tapu Point, we've had nothing more. Uh, Morton Bay Fig, we know that that's um, yeah, going to be looked at with it. Yep. The uh, next one. Alfresco Dino. Update from Cheryl yes. Evans. No option but to renew the yes. license for 32 years to engage with the Duke of Marble to work a safe mm -hmm. way for the president. And we excuse me. So that, that has to happen because we are commencing the placemaking project on the southern side of the strand and the alfresco policies need to continue until such time as we are ready to disrupt the businesses. It's an annual, I don't know why she's put two years, but it's actually an annual license as far as I'm aware. It's the liquor license that's two years. So, so what are we actually, so, Talking not liquor license, just a fresco license. Yeah. A year ago, and it was an absolute shambles. Mm -hmm. We decided we need to be consulted next year, well in advance. Yes. Forward. Right. Nothing happened. I gave her a man mind in the last meeting. We need yep. to do something. Yeah. So, what does it mean? Nothing no can option. be done. No, no. No. What does it mean? Does it just roll over as the condition we had last time? Or is it back to the old way where there was just free range? You put your tables where you want, you do whatever you want, or is it what we decided last year? What gets rolled over? Roger was here, we could have asked him, but it's the annual the annual license yeah. will get rolled but over. What gets rolled over? The one that we decided last year on because there were restrictions on it? Mm -hmm. Or is it what was before last year that it just you do whatever you want? Because we put quite a lot of restrictions on it last yeah, year. We do. So what rolls over? Because the stage is still up. Yes. And there's still cable going across the road. Mm. There is um, public benches within where people can drink alcohol on the public bench. You can't mm. drink alcohol. Mm. 
I mean, look, it's just not consistency and it's embarrassing. And we went to touch a rigmarole this year, yes. come back, and they, it has to be done by the end of this month. Yeah. But it's not just the Duke of Marlborough. We, I don't even know why this gets singled out. I find that mm -hmm. a bit <clears throat> in a public in the public document. Yeah. I think I think it's be, it's because of A in the resolution. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the whole yeah. For me it's the whole strand. There's several restaurants mm. on there. There's several issues there. And I know we're trying to solve it, but just because you're trying to solve it doesn't mean you can just roll over and say we're doing it for another two years. We've got no option. There's never no option. <coughs> I'm surprised at the two year. Yeah. Okay. So are these uh, applications for our BESCO dining licenses going to come to us in the next meeting? I doubt it very much. They will be applied for yesterday yeah. to be granted on yeah. the 30th. Um, so it's just a rubber stamp and it's just... Okay, well, I it, should it, that, it shouldn't it be though, should it, Manuela, because it doesn't comply. So um, it should be referred back to us, that one. such a shambles, this public... Mm. public um, Right. And the duty of care for the council, it comes down to that, was that stage, just tripping hazards, people drinking in public mm. places, nobody gives two hoots. So do you... Thanks, please. Um, I'm actually in a bit of a trouble following myself, so I roll when I hear of the difference. Alcohol attached to an alcohol dining. The policy I don't they sent two three conditions that you as recommended I captured conditions. So the essence of the one, essence of the one, and it escapes me. It's a butterfish? Yeah. They, they sit in the That issues for three years. The Alfresco dining license, two good people. Issues for one mm. year, June and June. I know it's wrong, but I see no reason why as a tool I set the After you I Thanks Anne, it is helpful. As I understand it, they only come to us if they don't comply. And hence, we only receive one. Um, and that was due to the fact that there was street furniture within the But the problem area. was, it was not just that one. Yes, it was. Anyway, anyway. thank you, Anne. Can we put that in an action sheet? To get, yes. Or shall I do that via mm, Melissa? We'll, we'll note it in here. Okay. Do you want resolution? If you want it to go into the action sheet that we're discussing, then it needs to be a motion on the no, table. I'll just do it in a list. Yeah. Okay, then I'll do it myself. So should we both follow that up? I'll, I'll do it. I'll copy you. Okay. In. Thanks, Anne, for that update. Right, moving on, Cherry Park House. Well, we know that that's um, in progress. Frank. Um, strategy and policy, yes, that's still in progress. Road naming, there was a really good discussion around that at the Combined Community Board workshop. Do we know if Glenn... Okay. 
Okay. Right, so we've got um, two things to add. One is page 25. We'll go back to there. I had something on there. I've got a note about amenity lighting. Yes, so that was um, to confirm the priority listings and obtain costs in relation um, to the amenity lighting in particular. Dave, your kitty kitty domain light issue. Do you want to describe that location or? Yeah, yeah. yeah so want we, we want to confirm the priority listings and obtain costings for the um, allocated or noted amenity lighting particular the Cobham Road car park. It's called the Bowen Club car park. That's the one that's on the, yeah, but I know, yeah, yeah, okay. That's what it's referred to. That's just for you to, that's what they are saying, okay, yeah. Cobham Road Bowling Club car park. Confused, can it? It can't be confused with anything else, can it? Also confirm priority listing and obtaining costings. You see, I missed the part oh, after for, oh, the for, note. For the noted um, amenity lighting list. And then also something extra for the Cobham. Yeah. Um, Sorry, back. The carriage domain as well. So you want to prioritise that one? Prioritising the what did we say? Prioritising the to know what everything costs. Cobham Road Bowling Club then car park. We can make a we can't make a decision what goes first before no. we know what each item costs. But I think what came out of that discussion, Manuela, was if I recall it, was that that that's a project yeah. in yeah. under construction. Yeah. And we haven't captured the, the particular light or lights that need to be costed and should be high priority. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. We have, we have two lights there that are chairman on that project that are for league at the moment because league's there. When the moves to whatever, we can reposition those lights around because at the moment they just shine in the grass area. And that would, okay. um, so there's a bit of discussion, but I'll undertake to do that with them. Is it one light or two? two? Two. So this is we're talking two lights here, Cobham Road. Um, I think two light. one light with two. Yeah, so, that, yeah, that's what we talked about for the group was so, so that there wasn't a expense of jump on like in places the boundary yeah. so that could show yeah. both yeah. directions. So member lane here to the ace with the uh, project management company about that time. About the, the location. The and, and the allocation. So there's a number of items. Yes, so this is to do with the kitty kitty domain redevelopment. And so for it so to get on the action sheet, I need a resolution. So I just want to, I'm not sure the, yep. what you want done with the common room. Okay, to confirm priority list and obtain cost items. For all noted amenity lighting. Um, oh, all the noted and then you probably don't need this. In this report. And we could not find the two lights. Um, Rachel came back to us. Um, Cobham Road Bowling Club car park, two lights to be. Not just the parking lot. Member Lane Knowles. Which is a separate issue. Yeah. Or even one for the car park. Yeah, yeah. So the bowling club and the bridge club who use it at night in particular. Yeah. Who yeah. have problems that it is. Some of the problems. Lane, yeah. yeah. Using that for quite a while and uh, anything. Two liaise with. So it's a safety issue in both books. <laughs> you can't <laughs> see. Thank you, Bennett. So you, excuse me, Lane, do you want to li are you li going to liaise with the project manager or with, with yeah. David Clapp and the project manager? 
with staff in the project with manager. staff in project manager. Okay. We've had that say what a year ago. Okay. Yes, well, I don't think fine. Oh, right. Sorry, I should it's, come up first. It's interesting the number of overlaps there are between me. the project. Okay. <laughs> normally right. Yeah, we need to vote on that. So, let me move. Yes, I move it. So, <laughs> Manuelas. Manuelas moved that. I'm going to read it out. It's not a. It's not worded as a resolution. It's not worded as a re resolution. Okay. To confirm the priority listing and obtain costings for all. Should it be that? The board request from this chief executive. Yeah. yeah. Collins Fongaraj, Fongaraj Community Board request from the Chief Executive. Confirmation. Confirmation of the priority. Of the priority listing and obtain amenity lighting. Costings for all noted amenity lighting in report 7.1. Cobham Road Bowling Club car park two lights to be added and costed. Member Lane ear to liaise with staff and project manager to identify the location. Would it be and that the Cobham Road Bowling Club car park mm -hmm. lights be added and cost. So the two lights are they in the car park or are they no they the don't exist they're not on the list. I suppose so it, and, have the ability and additionally, because they're not on here. So if we cost these, they're not going to get costed unless we put them on the list. Yeah. Confused. Okay. Get the common road bowling club. Added. Just take the word that and that Cobham Road bowling club car park. Two lights be added and costed. Be added to the list and costed. Remember, lane air to the eyes of start with project management. Right. So we had Mun that we had Manuela moved. Do I have a seconder? Lane second. Those in favour? Carried? Okay, it's carried. Right. Second one was the copy of page 149. Copy of the Power Road petition. I'd like to move that a copy of the Power Road petition, no, of the Power Road report. We send to the Power Road petitioner. Chairperson, yes, information. This may be the submitter of the Power Road yeah, petition. We, I don't know who that they organizer. were. Well, there was a number of people, but organizer, submitter. The Power Road petition is submitted. The only one that's in it. Yeah. People have made a submission to us and sent us a petition. We have had it. Should we ask instructing? I think they just presented the petition to us as a board in the public forum, if I recall, but I'd have to go back and dig it out. Yeah. We're doing it. Yeah. We're doing it because they wanted us to follow up and they wanted acknowledgement of their yeah. petition. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just making the point. Are you happy with that? that? Had a copy of the Power Road report recorded to yeah. the submissioner. It's part of the Power Road um, post construction audit report. Yeah. Yeah. 
Be forwarded to the submitter of okay. the petition, PET IT. Right. So, Manuel has put that. Do I have a seconder? Bruce, thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. So, those are the two additions. And it brings us to the end of our action sheet, unless I have missed something. All right. So now I'm going to move that we move into public exclusion. Did we carry the action sheet? Oh, did we vote on the action sheet? I don't think we voted on it, did we? No. no. I put it, Manuel seconded it. Yeah. Yep. That, that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board received the report Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board Action Sheet Update June 2022. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank anyone that's not supposed to be in here out. <laughs> oh, they've got to move first. They yeah. can go into pants. So kind of open still as you've got to move. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm going to move that we go into um, public exclusion. All those in favour? Against? Carried.
give us a countdown. Thank you, Marlena. And um, that is the end of our business for the day today. I'd just like to thank all of those who are in the room and listening to us online. And um, I will ask somebody to close with a karakia. Thank you. Dave, would you like to? Run away? Right. 